for all your inner Miami CS, Canes, Dolphins, Panthers, and Marlins merchandise. They have hats, t-shirts, game day jerseys, and so much more. Located at 2511 South University Drive in Davie. And open 24-7 online at caneswear.com or innermiamiwear.com. Call them at 954-835-5597. Caneswear, the spot where inner Miami and all Miami sports fans shop. When you're ready to purchase a new home or refinance the one you have, American Dream Lending will make sure your loan experience is easy with fast approvals and quick closings. With many loan programs and competitive rates, now is the time to turn your dreams into reality. Ask about special financing for veterans. They never charge an application fee and you will work directly with one of their experienced loan professionals. Stop dreaming and contact American Dream Lending today. 786-802-1727 or online at adreamlending.com. The viewpoints, statements, or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group, Inc., Ownership Management, Sponsors, or Website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome aboard to the show. It is 10 a.m. Eastern, and you know what that means. It is time to rock and roll on a beautiful Friday. Yes. Ah, yes. Lots and lots and lots of things happening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and we are uh, mighty, mighty happy here on the program as uh, we continue to grow uh, good morning to Sean Stanley, as always, getting it done. Remember, many ways. First of all, we want you to smash the hell out of that like button whenever you come in. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. You're listening on the podcast. Smash that like button. Very, very important. Uh, loaded show. It's a Friday. So Ira Winderman will be joining us at the bottom of the hour. Manny Navarro will stop by in hour number two. And Omar Kelly will join us in our number three. So we got a loaded show for you. We got all kinds of things to talk about uh, in, in all walks of life <laughs> on the show. Uh, news also, uh, more developments on the show. And uh, hopefully even next week, we might be even talking about a new edition. Really excited. Because uh, we're going to uh, meet with uh, someone on Monday that uh, will be adding another element to the show. And uh, and, and we're, we're working on, on several other elements, actually. But there's another one that will be very important to a lot of you out there uh, that we're, uh, we're going to add as we continue to expand the uh, platform. So appreciate all of you out there, as always, for tuning in, for listening, for sharing, for tweeting it out, for Facebook meta whatever <laughs> uh however it is you're doing it and uh linkedin you name it all of you out there pr thank you thank you thank you very much can't say enough uh, about the support uh the uh heat they're back in action tomorrow night by the way taking on the suns panthers last night unfortunately came up short in the shootout against the stars six to five they still pick up a point so that's all right uh barkov had two goals bob had 31 saves in the game i mean they, they're so awesome that it's just you can't win every stinking game dude it's really difficult in hockey and it's not like dallas is a crappy team either so you know saturday they'll take on win the one on saturday you know what i mean start start handing carolina more losses okay that's that's what I'd like to do because, you know, because I know I'm going to have to deal with Trocek scoring because he loves to score against the Panthers. You know, I don't even know if he's healthy or if he's on COVID or or something. Who knows? And I, and I don't mean it in any. I just feel like the COVID thing is like we're all going to get this variant. You know what I mean? It just seems like I probably had it. And I didn't even know I had it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. I don't know. You figure you would get some kind of symptoms or something, but. Uh, it's just, it's the weirdest thing, man. This thing is going right through all of us, which it's actually a good thing. You know, it, it's funny because at the beginning, you know, idiotically people compared it to the cold, which is not even close. 
But this one might be a little closer to that. Unless you're not vaccinated, then you put yourself at major risk that you, you something could happen. And that's the problem. And DNAs, we don't know. I got a friend of mine that's three. That he has a vaccine and everything, and it's three weeks. You know, it, it you could be vaccinated and you could be unvaccinated. And, you know, it just it's it's Russian roulette, man. It's Russian roulette is what it is. You know, at least the vaccine will keep you from a hospital bed and a ventilator. That's all that counts. To me, that's all I needed to know. That's it. You know, less chances of a ventilator and hospitalization. Yeah, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. But anyway, so uh, I we'll see what happens with the uh, Panthers. They take on Carolina on Saturday. So we've got two games on Saturday uh, to watch. Nothing tonight, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Because really, we're coming up to the end of, of the Dolphin season. Of course, we're going to have the playoffs that we, we all can enjoy and the Super Bowl and all that good stuff, but our Dolphins are not going to be in it. So we're not going to enjoy it the same way without the Aqua and Orange being in it. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll enjoy it because we're football fans. And there's a, and, you know, it's just rough now that, we, but we'll get into obviously the offseason talk. And, you know the sad part about the offseason talk? And what I mean by that is, on Sunday, you know, a lot of people are wondering, well, you know, I was reading Alan Pupar's article, and what was the, what was the, um, was it the last chance for Tua to make a case, question mark. And it's kind of crazy because that is actually an indictment on what's wrong generally with sports fans because what could he possibly do on on Sunday to change your mind so what if he throws for 500 yards and five touchdowns all of a sudden he's the quarterback so you're that's the problem the fact that you think one game should change your mind about it is the problem with the way you assess everything in life. And that's why you say Gesicki's a bust because it's not one game. It was an entire season that he was, you know, terrible. <laughs> but you have to, he's young. So you it can't be one season. You have to give him a couple of seasons to try to figure it out. And sure enough, he figured it out in year two. You know what I mean? So it's it's the it's the silliest thing in the world that well because he plays two or three good games, he must be your quarterback. But if he plays two or three bad games, he can't be your quarterback. That, where does that make any sense? And that's why if you're going into this weekend with the attitude that you need to see what he does here to decide whether you want to keep him or not, you know what? You're not really a, a, a bright football fan. That's what I'm going to have to say. You know, because it just doesn't make any sense. You're assessing somebody that has no coaching staff, that has no offensive line, that has no running game. And, and most of his receivers are unreliable. So it's hard to assess anyone in that kind of a situation. Right. But we overlook all of that. We think he's supposed to overcome all of that. And that's, again, what's wrong with the way we look at sports, period. Because somebody has a bad month. I mean, Jalen Phillips was a bust the first couple of weeks. And it's like the fact that you're calling Jalen Phillips a bust in the first month shows that you know nothing about football. The fact that you called Mike Kosicki a bust in the first year shows you know nothing about football. So if you're going into this week with the attitude that you need to decide whether he's your quarterback or not, depending on what he does here, that doesn't make any sense, man. Jalen, uh, Jalen, um, uh, what's it? Even though I don't believe in him necessarily as a quarterback, but things have changed 
and the kid in Philadelphia played better this year. I think they made a coaching change too, right? I think they had some some changes on the offense, and he's played a little better. But it, it's it's like I said, Steve Young in, in in Tampa, and then going to San Francisco. It's watching Drew Brees lost for three years in San Diego until the light went on in year four. You know, sometimes you have to give this some time, but. To think that the New England game is going to decide whether Tua is or isn't the QB makes zero sense. So you guys can look at it that way if you want, but I think it's incredibly short-sighted to judge anybody on that one game. You need to see them over a, a stretch of time and, and put in a good situation, not in a constant terrible situation. And that's what he's in. And here's the other thing. Let me let me explain something to, to all of you out there. Because this is the other part of the equation that I think folks don't look at with, with Tua. And you, you look, he needs, obviously, like any quarterback, needs a lot. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday. I told you one of, a, one of, a, one of the guys on Twitter was like, well, we need somebody to mask this. If you're building a team that's defective, then how do you, how do you expect to win a championship? So you're trying to find a Superman because you're not good enough. Well, then you're never going to win a championship anyway. And all you're going to do is drive Superman crazy because he's going to try to save you every week. And he can't save you every week because you're not good. And you'll end up with four wins, like Deshaun Watson. Or you'll end up like Marino, that you threw 4,000, 5,000 yards, and it got you nowhere, basically. Because the team you would face every week had the resources. I mean, every, every year in the playoffs, in the Bills, had the resources and a better team. So it's funny how... A lot of people spend their time trying to fix the quarterback when everything else is broken. And maybe the quarterback isn't broken. Maybe what's broken is the coaching staff. What's broken is the offensive line. What's broken is the running backs. What's broken is 70% of your wide receiving core. What's broken is your coaching staff is too stupid to know how to play Mike Gesicki all the time. These are the things that are broken. So why not focus on what you need to fix? Because then that elevates everything else. You fix the line, makes two a better. You give them a running game, makes two a better. And think about an accurate, intelligent quarterback that can move around in the pocket and you give him a running game where that sucks up the linebackers and opens up the middle of the field. How do you think Tua is going to play then? But nobody thinks that because you're so caught in the moment because that's what we are, prisoners of the moment, thinking the game against New England is going to decide Tua's fate or not. Thinking that, well, if he can't bail out a terrible offensive line, a terrible coach, a terrible running game, and receivers that are constantly injured, oh, then he must not be the quarterback. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, right? So in Tennessee, they know they have a guy with limitations, so they build around him. In Baltimore, they know they have a guy with limitations, but they build around him to help him look better. A ton of tight ends, linemen, running game, running backs, all the things that you need, defense, special teams. Harbaugh builds the kind of team that you need around Lamar Jackson. Because they, they everybody has some kind of limitation. So you've got to make sure, right? It's just... Focus on the entire picture, not on one individual that actually is still excelling in the worst circumstances possible. Give him better circumstances 
and he'll succeed. The child that doesn't have a shot in an education is going to struggle to get ahead in life. The child that has an education has the better opportunity to succeed in life. Sometimes it's the tools around you that will help you to get better, period. Doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be just football. You know, you could be a great salesperson, but if they don't give you, if you work on a, on a terrible car lot that has all kinds of bad used cars, this and that, you're just going to be struggling along. But if somebody hires you and they put you at Craig Zinn's Acura Pembroke Pines, and now you're selling a TSX and an RDX and all that, all of a sudden now you're going to be making a lot of money. You're going to be making a lot of commission. Why? Because all you're, you're not selling junks. You're not selling lemons. You're selling quality vehicles. That, that huge difference. So it depends on what you're working with, and that's who you're going to become at times. You can only overcome so much. And trust me, as a guy that's been in this business a long time, I've experienced it when I know that, you know, not for nothing, but I'm either as talented or more talented than some of the people that I've worked with, and yet they were given better resources to succeed. Better time slots, better producers, all those kind of things. It's happened to me. And I got to find a way to overcome it, but it's a pain in the ass. We all, we're all in the same boat. And so is Tua. Problem is, you guys, some of you are, are, are too much focused on one person. That, and that one person really is not the, 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 the problem. That person's more of the solution. The periphery is entirely the problem. 855-912-1056. That's 855-912-1056 if you want to get in on the program. Nizzo chiming in. Thank you, sir, with a little love on the super chat. He says, buenos dias, O, oh, from snowing, freezing Cleveland. Wishing I was in South Florida uh, right now, brother. TGIF, fins up. Thank you, Nizzo. Appreciate you, my man. Uh, NorCal says, NorCal Dolphin Club has raised over 2400 for DCC. Help us Sunday in uh, Suisun City, California. Donate and get raffle tickets for cool autograph prizes. Uh, splat the pats. Puff, puff, can't give. There you go, Mark. Don't, don't pass now. All right, we got to wait for all these variants to, to go by. You know, when you smoke now, Roll yourself a personal. Don't roll a fatty. Just, you know, if you roll a fatty, you're going to be sharing. And you're, no, 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 no. Not sharing is caring now. Okay? While we've got a, you know, a virus going around in a pandemic, we must teach our kids right now that not sharing is caring. Okay? So, nice job by you, NorCal. Not sharing is caring. Leon Fresco. Do you have a Fresca, Leon? I'm just wondering. Now, that's that's what you need to do now, Leon, okay? Now you need to – you're always on Twitter, right? So I need you to send me a picture of you holding a Fresca, okay? I want Leon Fresco holding a Fresca. We're going to show it here on the show too. So tweet me out. Leon Fresco with a Fresca. He says, Team Brass knows Watson buys them two to three more years. Well, an offensive line will buy you a lifetime. <laughs> okay? A running game will buy you a lifetime. Go draft another Waddle, that'll buy you a lifetime. You know? Focus, go get a real offensive line coach, that'll buy you a lifetime. Go get a real offensive coordinator, that'll buy you a lifetime. Go get a real quarterback's coach, 
That'll buy you a lifetime. Better yet, go get a real head coach. That'll buy you a lot of time. As I said, Mr. Greer, I root for you. I root for Mr. McKenzie. I root for Marvin Allen. I think you three are excellent and you know your stuff and you can build a hell of a team. But you can't build a hell of a team if you hire the wrong uh, coach. You screwed up the first time. So now it's time to fix the problem and fire flow and get another coach that can build a real staff. Okay? Not this clown show that's a high school and barely college staff. That's the problem right there. Uh, Stephen Caparella says, TGIF, Big O, it's going to rain Sunday. Everybody gets a pass. Just want to crush the patsies, nothing else. Would be nice. And it would be really, really nice to end the season with a win against the uh, Patriots. I really do. I, I am a little worried. I will admit, okay, I have a concern about this game. I really do. I have a a major concern about this game that there's going to be a letdown from the players. And I'm not going to blame uh, Flo for the letdown because I don't give Flo credit for the wins either. I think these players are just, you know, true pros on their own, and they went out there like they did for Sperano and they did for Gase, and it's not because they love Gase. They went out and... After a crappy start, they had a 9-2 and two finish because they're pros. It's not this whole tanking thing that you guys think of. No, man. They're going to, they, they go out there and they do their job no matter what. Nobody has to tell Sean Stanley to do his job every day. Nobody has to call. I don't have to call Sean to motivate him, to get him up. Hey, come on, man. Let's go. Yeah. Nothing. He's a pro. And... I just think that human nature takes over and there's nothing to play for. And that's, you know, I, I just wonder, you know, it's just one of those that you just wonder if they're going to be a little tuned out in this one. And that is the one thing I do fear that they have, you know, after one in seven, they, they somehow fought to get back and they just weren't able to get over the hump. I really worry about a letdown this week because it's kind of human nature after, you know how in a game or even with the Panthers, we've seen it too with the Panthers. Um, but in a basketball game, your team falls behind by 20, right? And they're scratching and clawing. They're coming back, dude. And they come back to either tie it or bring it within one or two or three points. And you're you're on the edge of your seat as a fan. You're like, all right, they're coming back. And then they kind of run out of gas and the team that was leading by a long shot by, by a big uh, margin wears them down finally and pulls away and wins by seven, eight, nine points. And it's over. And you're like, damn dude, it's just the hole was so big and have not, we have, haven't we seen it with the Panthers that there are years that the Panthers used to start off slow and we'd be frustrated. And then the second half, the Panthers would have a magical second half and they'd climb the standings and they'd be on the brink of getting that A spot, and they'd fall short because they would run out of gas because it's just human nature that you're killing yourself, you're killing yourself. You've done it in pickup basketball games. You've done it in softball games, okay? Maybe even some pickup football games at the park. You know, I can even bring it to that level. We've all done it, man. Where even, you know, you're you're playing some pickup basketball, four on four, full court, and the other team takes like a seven point, eight point lead. The rest of you get pissed off and you work it, you work it, and it's up to like a, it's up to 15, and they're, you know, up by seven or eight, and you're killing yourself and you tie it by 12 or 13, and then they score the last couple points and beat it because it was just a mission to get out of that hole. And that's what I wonder with the Miami Dolphins. Is this the mission that, you know, you busted your ass to get out of one and seven physically, emotionally, all of that. And now that you have nothing to play for and you get disappointed with the loss in Tennessee and it was a demoralizing loss because physically they manhandled you. And you don't think the Patriots are watching that? 
because they just did that a couple of weeks ago. All right? They were in a game where they said, eh, we'll pass the ball three times. We'll just run it down your throat. So expect a lot of running in this game. And if you break Miami's will early, I don't know how they fight back from that. So that is the one thing I am terrified about this week, that it could get ugly because of that. If it happens on Sunday and we're in the postgame show, we'll talk about it. But I hope it does, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope they go out there and, and put up the effort you know, of the year and, and beat the Patriots and nine and eight, beat the Patriots and nine and eight, beat the Patriots and nine and eight. So at least there's something I can smile about to end the season. The season's not going to give me an overall smile because they didn't improve and they didn't get to the playoffs. But at least if you can beat the Patriots, I'll, I'll take that, man. You know, I'll take that. Flow be start, flow be starting slow. Uh, a little love on the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. He says the nuclear nightmare scenario, the Finns trade for Watson, the team goes 4-13 and 13 or 6-11, and 11, and the team now stuck with an accused sexual predator diva on the team who they traded all their assets for and cap space. The $70 million in cap space, 40 of it is taken by the salary. Not a good thing. So you're going to take up a lot of space and the rest of your, of your draft capital. I'm not a fan of that. As I said in just an earlier rant on this show, fix everything else. Fix the coaching staff and fix the offensive line, and you're going to see a whole different team next year. I promise you this, okay? Here's my prediction for 2022. If you get a new coaching staff, and a competent offensive group that can coach the line and offense and quarterback, and you go by yourself a couple of linemen, I don't care who runs the ball. You're a playoff team next year. Tua will get you to the playoffs if you get them that. And if you get them a, a stud back to go along with all those improvements, you might make yourself a nice run into the playoffs. If you have the offense that can score, you have the defense that can attack, and they're better to play with, you know, uh, with, with the lead, obviously, everything will work out for Miami. But if you still think that the QB is the problem and you don't fix the coaching staff and you don't fix the offensive line, it doesn't matter who the QB is. You're not going anywhere. By the way, folks, I, I want to remind you and I, I mean this in in the nicest way because we're I'm about to, it's going to sound like I'm dissing my favorite player of all time, but I'm not. What I mean by is the era. Marino wasn't good enough. It's not good enough to just get to one Super Bowl. It's not good enough to have a few trips to the playoffs and not really make a major impact. It's not good enough that you didn't win a Super Bowl. So for the people that say, no, we need a Marino to mask the deficiencies. No, you need a coaching staff and you need a real team so you can win a Super Bowl. What you could never do and you were really never close to with Marino. Because obviously, in hindsight, you look at it they they didn't belong anywhere on the field with the San Francisco team they went to the Super Bowl with. That team was so superior because Miami did not have the defense to belong in the Super Bowl with San Francisco. San Francisco was an elite offense and defense. Miami did not even come close on the on one side of the ball, and they didn't even have an elite running game. San Francisco, they had Roger Craig way better than anything Miami has. And what, Tom Rathman, Rathman, right? The fullback? So, remember, that's not good enough. So it's not about getting a guy that can help you mask your deficiencies. It's about improving all of your deficiencies 
so you can elevate the entire franchise, not just the QB, not just the coaches, not just the offensive line and the fans to a title. All right, give me a minute. Ira Winderman joins us and the Acura Pembroke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA report. Heat fans, time for the best insight of your favorite team with insider Ira Winderman, exclusively on the Big O Radio Show. It's the Acura of Pembroke Pines, Miami Heat, and NBA report. Here's Ira Winderman. Here, Orlando Alvieri. <laughs> Hello. Dude, I, I got here. I got here first. The AC was off, bro. The AC was off. I had to. I had to go turn on the AC. I'm like, damn. I'm a half hour in the show. It's getting a little muggy in here. I'm like, you know, cause... oh, if oh, if you would pay the electric bill, the landlord would keep the AC on. You know what? You got a tough landlord. What can I tell you? I'll tell you, man. Yeah, and and you know what, Ira? This would be the perfect room up north. Because in, in, in the studio I have here, I insulated the whole thing, roof right. and all. Roof. Sound. The roof sure. has insulation, okay? And I don't think you've ever even gone to a radio studio where all those little uh, foam things are on the roof and everything. Yes. So this thing is tight. You, you, you never hear any echo in this room. This room is just, it's perfect. And it's the warmest room in the damn house house okay it doesn't matter you could be cranking the the house up at 68 and you walk in here and it's 70 something and when it gets 70 something outside if the if the ac is not on boy it's 80 something in this room so if you were up north this would be the room you would stick yourself in while it's you know 30 degrees outside or something like that man so no, my, my it, wife's it, the same actually i have the two tvs behind me and i have two other tvs in this room and i cover games remotely Plus, I have this light on sometimes when I do TV also. My wife walks in here and he go, she goes, how do you deal with that? Because right. you have yeah. all that stuff. It, just like you, all that electronics running also. So, yeah, so I'm probably giving myself some horrible disease with four TVs running at the same time. But, hey, it's efficient. Yes, <laughs> you're right about that. You are right about that. All right. Um, I, I can't say enough about what happened in Portland the yes. other night. I, it's just uh, it, adversity, 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 and I. Very few teams can overcome the kind of adversity. You get two players ejected on a team that's already short on players, and I know they were missing their guys too. Correct, but still, I mean, and you're the road team and everything. Uh, that was that was super impressive. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, and the thing is, yes, you know, it was almost an even score to start the game. They didn't have Lillard and, and McCollum. The Heat didn't have Adebayo and Butler. But still, it was a road trip for the Heat. Portland was home. Both teams had days off. To me, the difference was, you know, it's, sometimes it's the little guys. And you, and you mentioned this also when you talk about Dolphins and team sports. What P.J. Tucker did to rally the other guys, he basically said, I'm the last veteran standing. I'm going to be the fulcrum. I'm going to be who everything it works off of. Now I right. need you young kids to take over. He gave an inspiring locker room speech after Golden State when he told the guys, Enough about the injuries, enough about COVID, enough about who's not here, enough about being on the road. We need to win. We're the Miami Heat. We don't have losing streaks against the Kings and the Warriors. We need to win. He delivers that speech. At halftime of the game in Portland in the Moda Center, he gets all the guys together. He says, look, I'm not telling all you guys you're going to be with the Miami Heat your entire careers. I'm not telling you 10-day guys you're going to be here next week. But what I'm telling you is you can make a statement in a moment like this that other people notice, that they say, you know what, Kyle Guy, we need a guy also. Haywood Highsmith, who the hell is Haywood Highsmith? He comes out of nowhere, he gives us double-digit minutes in a victory. You still can make a name for yourself, play with pride, and that's what they did at the end of that game. And oh, without being too long-winded here, like usual, the Portland game reminded me of the Pacers game. There were certain teams that almost have quit on their seasons. They see themselves going nowhere. There's no direction from the coaching staff and the front office. And you can see the players just wandering. The Heat don't have that. They have a vision. They have a purpose. They have a direction. And you can see the difference. To me, that drew the Pacers game and the Blazers game as similarities because they were playing opponents wandering in the desert. And the Heat had a focus and they had a vision. And they closed out those games. And, you know, that's a credit to the Heat in, in so many ways because – they're very they're they're very um woke let's use a a modern term i'll be careful with that politically but okay 
Yeah, but but what I'm saying is they're very woke on on the way people think mm -hmm. and their attitudes and their emotions. And a great example was the bubble where they yes. create they created a an environment. They said, all right, we're going to have our guys stuck here for a couple of months. You know, they put the pictures of their families and they started doing all those kind of different things where they tried to create an environment that was more family oriented so that that in a way they they find a psychological way and this is this is back to the Riley sticking his you know his head in an ice bucket or whatever he they try to reach their players emotionally physically uh you know uh, discipline wise all those kind of things but they try to create an environment that gives them motivation whether it's 31 10 whether it's rex chapman 39 points i mean we just look at the history of this team there really is never any quit and somehow or another the players are always fighting for wins no matter what's going on that's just a matter of pride big o and i'll give you a, a couple but, of but it's them but that's yeah, them but that's but that it, the kings should, don't do that you know what everyone. i'm saying i'll give you the corollaries okay it's like I can't always get out on the road now because of COVID, but I'm still going to do the best job I can. So I wait for the NBA officials report to come at 2.30 in the morning on Wednesday. And even though it's damn late here, I write that story because people want to know what the officials were saying about the Lowry ejection and the hero ejection. It's late. It's like I have this friend in radio. You might have heard of him. I don't, I don't know if you know him. Um, I'm not going to use his nickname. I'll use his regular name, Orlando Alzagari, where terrestrial radio decides to do something, and he decides I'm going to do the best damn job I can with the resources I have. That's who the Heat are. They're not – these guys are on COVID. This guy had thumb surgery. This guy is out with a tailbone injury. They're – who do we have now? And I wrote this in my Ask Ira the other day. I don't know if you and your wife watch TV together late at night and watch that show on Food Network called Chopped where they get these baskets oh, of food and oh, they have to decide from all this crap what they're going to make out of it. And I wrote in my Ask Ira, that's Eric Spolstra. He opens his basket up and he has calf livers and he has crow's feet and he has frog's eyes. And yet he makes something palatable that turns into something. I compared him to yeah. Ted Allen, the host of that show. And, and, and a matter of fact, I'm not, matter of fact, I'm going to let you deep inside Ask Ira. The question that I used that day was from a former NBA scout who wrote me after watching the game in Portland, who noticed what Eric Spolster did with as little as he had. And he was so impressed that his question was, stop the balloting Eric Spolster's coach of the year. Because Eric Spolster doesn't lament pregame or postgame who's not here. I right. hate the quote. You and I spoke about it. We spoke about it with Clay on our Wednesday show. We talk about it all the time in these accurate Pembroke Pines reports. We have enough. No, you don't. No, you don't. It's like, it's like the emperor with no clothes. You have no clothes on. You don't have enough. Yeah. But he doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't go in that direction. And that inspires his players. Where exactly. Kyle Guy goes, I'm enough. Where, right. where Max well, because goes, he's, say, he's saying enough. He's saying we You're have enough, enough because he's saying to Kyle Guy, I have enough because I believe in you, Kyle Guy, and I'm going to go play you. And Kyle Guy rewards him. So, yeah. yes, you're, you're yeah, correct. It's, it's like that, if you remember, way back in Saturday Night Live, that Stuart Smalley thing, I'm good enough, I'm happy right. enough. Come on, right. Michael Jordan, you can say it to me. That's what it is. Eric Spolstra convinces his players they have enough, and they walk out on that court, and they puff their chest, and they don't give a damn if anyone says, who the hell is Haywood's Heitsmith? He says, I'm here to win. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the two issues that went on in that game. First of all, the Lowry ejection, which didn't seem like much. It but was. here's the problem. Uh, and I got to ask you this because you have more experience than I do, but I do have the experience of being a beat guy. And I had, and it, I was a beat guy in the early days when I was actually allowed to be like right on the court, actually, sure. to watch it back in the day. I was wondering, Ira, was there anything personal between those two yes. before that that yes. we don't know about, that there's some kind of. Who knows? We don't know what Lowry told them in Pat walking by him, gave him some smart ass exactly. remark. And then I just wonder because it just seemed like it was a, a sarcastic way of giving him the ball and that there was something. And this was like him saying, well, oh, really? F you. And here you go. And you're out. So here's here. what happens. The NBA, just like with the players, the referees are in COVID protocol. There was a point, I think a third of all referees were out of action. They are shuffling these guys' schedule like crazy. The NBA generally does not want the same officials working the same team in the same week. Look, moments happen in games. You move on from them. 
All of a sudden, this official who's called a non-staff official when you need extras to bring them in, uh, when Clay Ferraro fills in on your show, he's not the host, but he's the host for this show or whatever. Okay. So this official, the first ever NBA official from Canada, had worked WNBA games and G League games. All of a sudden, he worked the Heats game Sunday in Sacramento, and he gave Eric Spolster a technical foul. And there he was, four days later, Wednesday in Portland, working in the game again. That would not happen under typical circumstances. They just got to get three officials. A lot of times you're watching NBA games now, and you'll recognize two of them and have no idea who the third official is. They're being called in from the WNBA, from the G League, from the uh, auxiliary pool. They're making being made to work double shifts. He might have flown in hours before the game. Everyone's under stress. It's like... um. That old Billy Crystal movie, I'll Take Paris, when he ejects every player on the court because he's having a bad day. Fine. Yes. Kyle Lowry gets called for foul early in the game. He doesn't agree with it. But if you go back and listen to the Heat game with the ambient sound, he is relentless toward this official. Probably telling him he doesn't deserve to be there. Who are you? I've never seen your face. On and on and on and on again. Then we get two minutes later in the game. Duncan Robinson, not Kyle Lowry's called for a foul. Kyle tosses the ball, not as softly as he should. And you can see, if you slow down the video on that, it's all over the internet. Duncan Robinson in slow motion giving those words of, oh, no. He knows that Kyle has one T and just did something that could merit the second T, and he gets ejected for that. Kyle has to know better. I love Kyle as a leader. I love Kyle's sass. It's who he is. You're talking about this chunky six-foot point guard who is an all-NBA level player because of his savvy and his smart and his moxie. But he pushed the envelope too far there. That was not an incorrect ejection because the referee just had enough. Now, I believe if you're a young official, you confer with Benny Adams and Derek Richardson, the veteran officials, and go, what should I do here? And they'll give you the little nod like, yep, you're right. You have every right to do it. Or they'll give him the, mm mm-mm. You don't do that to a star. He didn't do that. He just did the heave-ho and sent him out. I thought his reaction was rash, but I thought Kyle was asking for it, and Kyle should have known better. All right. The other one, obviously, Tyler, um, uh, what's it called, retaliates? Against Nurkic, right. Against Nurkic. And and, and you know what? Uh, Chris Rock had that thing like, I don't condone it, but I understand. Yes. Uh, and I, I, I kind of that's where I was when I'm watching that. I don't condone it, but I understand because, you know, and, and we'll bring a full circle because we have some things to talk about there. You know, Markeith Morris. Yes. Did not make a basketball play. Correct. And, and so I, 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 you know, you got injured, but dude, you, you looked for it, bro. You, 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 you made a dirty play. And to me, that's what Jerkic did. He did a dirty play and Tyler got pissed. And if you're, and I know we're not on the street, but if that's a pickup game, that's a fight. Okay. That's a couple, fight couple, because, but I want to unwind ahead. something here. Go ahead. Mar- the Markeith Morris take foul and Akoli Jokic was in a game that was double digits in the final minutes and was decided. There was no need for Markeith Morris to have a take foul there. You just play it out at the end. You pull your starters. You call it a night. Hey, teams lose. Teams get humiliated. Teams get humbled. It happens a lot at Mile High in Denver. So you have the running for a uh, shoulder shove against against um, Jokic in the game in Denver, and you're asking for retaliation. Now, I don't think Jokic realized he was putting 300 pounds of force on him at the time, but that happened. Big O, the difference here is this was a competitive game. This was a five-point game with True. more than enough time for Portland to win. So when Nurkic, Josef Nurkic, the Bosnian B, sent a screen, set a screen on Tyler Hero, he did it as a basketball play. Maybe too physical of a basketball play. Yeah. But the, but the referees did not call a foul on that play. So clearly, Big O, it was borderline enough to merit debate from the officials whether it was a foul. Now, Tyler took umbrage. I understand that. But the running two-hand shove we've already seen in the NBA can lead to a suspension, even though it came from this pipsqueak. Again, what happened with Jokic was 300 pounds on 240 pounds, 60 pounds of ballast that way. Tyler Hero is 195. Yosef Yosef Nurkic is 295. It's 100 pounds the other way. It's like you getting angry at a brick wall and shoving it. The brick wall probably doesn't know it's it's happening. When Nurkic turns and throws an arm 
at, at Hero, it was with an open fist. My thought is this. The NBA has to penalize both. They probably give Nurkic a game because you swung. We know if you swing in the NBA, it's usually a problem. Tyler gets a fine. Could Tyler get suspended? Yes, he could. And if Tyler does get himself suspended with the Heat shorthanded, then I think Tyler Hero is just as culpable as Kyle Lowry was in his play. You've got to be able to keep your temper in those kind of moments. And I got to tell you, with the free throws that resulted from that play, Portland had a chance on a three-pointer to tie yeah. that game oh, after that, he definitely. led by 19 early, by 14 in the fourth quarter. You got to control your emotions better. We see it in hockey. We see it in football. Right. We see it in idiots in football throwing punches to a helmet. What are you thinking? Same right. thing there. You've got to keep your composure. No, I'm with you there. Uh, you you definitely got to keep your composure, but it's just – I obviously I thought it was a, a, a foul. You know what I mean? I for sure I thought it was a foul. Speaking of Markeith Morris, by the way, uh, well, no, wait a minute. I think I got the wrong one. Let me let no, me. I, I want the one dumbass three hundred pounder or whatever. I know what you're looking for. Yeah. Yes, uh, we have it. We have it. If you go to Markeith timeline, it. yeah. We have it. Wait a minute. Here we go. Yes, here we go. So yesterday. Legion Hoops tweets out, this is wild. Markeith Morris has missed 30 straight games for the Heat since he got whiplash from his scuffle with Nikola Jokic on November 8th. Sheesh. So Markeith then retweets, ah, shit. Wild about it? It's it's a real injury. Imagine having a 300-pound sloppy fat boy run full speed and make direct contact with your spine. I'll be back soon, like I said. So sloppy uh, he, fat boy. I retweeted it that way. Sloppy fat boy. <laughs> you know what? Not not a good idea, Marquise thing. You got to you got to move on. You don't want to draw the league's attention. But you this is who he is. This you is are, the, right. The Morris is, brothers have been this their entire yes, career. They, they are recidivists. That. They are guys who have been the instigators more often than they've taken this back. I will say one thing. And oh, your show I think was the first with it. I told you from the moment it happened, whiplash can be a three-month injury. You spoke about your incident when you were in high school with your whiplash, how it does linger. So this is not malingering. This is not Markeith Morris playing it for sympathy or anything. This is a legitimate issue. And what he put up with, Jack, stop smiling at me like that. This is a, a legitimate injury that he missed time with. But this is not the way to come back. The way to come back is just to come back, to move aside. You've played Denver twice this season anyway. You're not going up against them. I think he could have been a little bit smarter and just realized, hey, the game is what matters. And Big O, it's what I told you let, earlier this week in our Accurate Pembroke Pines report. Marquise Morris no longer is guaranteed minutes. Not the way that Max Struess has been playing. Not the way that Omar Yurtsevin has been playing. And right. not the way that Caleb Martin has been playing. That right. when I'm doing my rotation. And I have my primary. Please get Jack off the screen. He's starting to freak me out here. Well, so well, we got to we, we, we gotta get the response from. Okay, Keith. go ahead. Go ahead, Big O. No, no, no. Finish your point. Finish your point. So my point is, Marquise is guaranteed nothing. And when you're guaranteed nothing, I think you spend more time working on the return than maybe working on your social media game. By the way, Jack's agreeing with you the entire time. Uh, so Keith then said, "I said what I said, Heat Nation. I'll see y'all soon." With the uh, smiley faces. And below, of course, our boy Brendan Tobin is uh, is agreeing. By the way, Brendan, nice job with the uh, Struess video. That was that was really really good. But uh, anyway, he always does a great job with all those things. Um, but so Keith, uh, he, he didn't like like expected. He didn't back down from what he said. He is so, who he is. Yes. Yes. And, and and so the question I have for you is: Should the Heat worry about? Any kind of future? Oh, wait a minute. Is even Denver's not on the on the schedule They're anymore? Done. No, right? they play. They play the twice. Okay. Western All right. So they don't have done. to worry until next year, and he may not even be here. Right. Uh, next year. So okay, that's. Well, but here's the uh, thing, Big O. Unless we get, unless it's the NBA Finals between Denver and Miami. Fair enough. But let <laughs> Big O. Let's bring it back to basketball. Okay. Let's say that he get okay. back to their traditional starting lineup. Everyone's healthy. Hopefully mid January. So it's Bam. It's Tucker. It's I'm going to put Robinson for now. We can debate that later. Robinson, uh, Butler, and Lowry. So we know off that the bench the other off the bench Robinson. I know, but, the but other that night. was his first game back. So we know pretty, know obviously Hero is going to be six man even with the struggles. Probably Deadman or another big man seventh. I'm not yeah, so but sure the, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, he came off the bench, but Struess was starting. Going, 
Yeah, you belong on the bench. All right, go, go ahead. I'm the sorry. The way he go, played. Go. So I'm saying is I'm not so sure that Markeith Morris plays ahead of Caleb Martin right now. So I think Markeith Morris should be more concerned about earning his time back. Yes, Caleb Martin. Now, Caleb Martin's a smaller power forward. He's actually a two. He's a two, three. But he's so versatile. They have started him at four in, in Markeith Morris's and P.J. Tucker's absence. So that's a possibility. It's going to be and fascinating. And he's a three-way player, something that Markeith yes. isn't. Yes. He plays offense, he plays defense, and he can hit the three. And he can hit it uh, even on a on a more efficient uh, level than Markeith Morris. And he stays off social media. So that's another check in his box yeah, right there. That, that's true. No, yeah, no, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, uh, you know, the Mad Dog, rest in peace, Mad Dog. You know, he used to say, there's a shoeless man outside the door waiting right. to take your job. All right. And, and we're watching Markeith Morris, yes. Dwayne Dedman, and Duncan Robinson, yes. uh, that injuries are COVID, are not a not a not a help no, this year. No. Because I, I don't want to belabor the segment here because we'll be back with a couple more la- next week from Accurate Pembroke Pines. But I will say this: if you go to your chat net right now and people slam that like button and also go on your chat, the debate of Struess and Robinson is legitimate. It's oh, one yeah. you can have legitimately. The debate of Yurt Seven and Deadman is legitimate. And as we've just added here on the Acura Pembroke Pines report, the debate right now of Caleb Martin and Markeith Morris is legitimate. That's a testament to their depth. That's a testament for guys who step up and say, I'm going to seize the moment. It's fascinating. It gives you and I so much fodder that I know other sports shows in town might go, oh, my God, the Dolphins season's over. What are we talking about now? Oh, we will have plenty to talk about with this Miami Heat team because of this roster's composition. Well, the best two teams in town take over now after the Dolphins season is done because the Heat and the Panthers are the best teams in town. The Panthers are the best team in town. Well, maybe, Heat, Kane's ba- maybe Kane's basketball. We should give them a little love also with the way they're playing. Yeah, no, I know they're playing well. It's just Cod Ira, you know, when we grew up with, you know, Pat Ewing and, you know, guys that were, in, in you know, Michael Jordan, all these guys we were watching for three or four years in the league, and we were watching real, like we're watching UNOV and Duke for two years. Right. Big Larry Johnson against yeah. Leighton. Yeah. I agree, yeah. You know, the, the college basketball that we grew up with. Is not one guess, and done, right. It's not transitory. Guess, it's not even one and done anymore. Now now they even lost those guys. Those guys are going to the G League now. Well, not so only that, but also guys in midseason, you saw with Kyrie Irving and others, like, oh, I've had enough. I'm. It, it's almost right. like the, the college football also. Okay, I've had enough. I'm done. It's just, I know, and it's just, I don't look at college basketball like what it used to be. You know what I mean? I just, I kind of find, now, instead of looking at college basketball like it was the level under the NBA, I'm now looking at college basketball like it's a hair above high school. Yes. That's my that's my problem. With, with the, the G League, with with. Yeah, with, with everything, unless they've added all. So it, it's got to water down, and that's what college football is so afraid of. Yes. Think, think about those Bayheim teams with with uh, Billy Owens and and Cycli and, and Thompson and Sherman, uh, and, Douglas. And yeah. Sherman Douglas and Rowe and all these guys. Are you kidding me, dude? They were, they were, like, rolling out, like, you know, NBA players, like it's going out of style. And I'm watching Pat Ewing, Dikembe Mutombo, and who's the other? And Zoe. I mean, are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> you know, I just... It's just a different – that's my problem. But, yes, and, and listen, Laranaga is – I mean, he's he's a gold standard yes. when it comes to college coaching. I, I really love uh, Laranaga. He's an awesome coach. It's just that sport has suffered so much. All right, so uh, we talked about the rise of Struess and Duncan, obviously, the Tyler ejections, all of that. Injury updates, what do we know, Ira? I think there's a chance, Jim, he could come back tomorrow in Phoenix, but – I think because they won in Portland and they're two and two on this trip and they're still nine games over 500 and the worst they come back eight games over 500, maybe they use prudence because there's also three days off before they play again after the game in Phoenix. So I think they're more careful there. I think the rest of the Heat players and protocols, which is Gabe Vincent, uh, Marcus Garrett, and Udonis Haslam are very close. It's a matter of whether they want to fly them cross country to Phoenix or not. I think all five Heat players were brought on, or six players on emergency 10 day contracts probably will be history, including our good friend Mario Chalmers by the start of next week. The Kyle guy thing will be difficult. He contributed. But again, when you have the shooting of Struess and Duncan Robinson, it's not as critical to have the shooting of Kyle guy, but he'll be on their radar. He'll be a guy if they make a two for one trade, someone they could go back to later in the season. So it's like it's like PJ Tucker said, you made a name for yourself. Someone noticed. Good job, guys. 
Yeah, but you were talking about this uh, on the Palo Rock City Inside the Paint show that that guys are, once their 10-day contracts are about to expire, there are teams that are already, yes. you know, hey, you, when you're done here, come there. Right. And, and now, and now I, I, can't yeah. ima- I can't imagine Kyle Guy is not going somewhere else. No, no, Utah right now league. was the only team right in the now. NBA who didn't have a COVID case, and now all of a sudden Joe Ingles and now Rudy Gobert and others are following. So I think Utah's going to be sort of the collection agency for a lot of these guys as they're let go. Absolutely, Big O. Yeah, it's a, so there's no way they can keep Guy on their G League team, in other words. No, the only way they can is if they cut Marcus Garris from his two-way contract and sign Kyle Guy to a two-way. Interesting, intriguing. Maybe they feel there's no market for Garrett, that they could stash Garrett instead. Who knows? You have till January 20th to guarantee your two-way contracts, so there is a little wiggle room there. But Garrett, in a way, I know Garrett brings the Briante uh, defense, but he's actually a slightly better offensive player too, right? And that's the that is, that's the problem that Garrett brings a, a dimension, yes. yeah, a dimension that's a little different than Kyle Guy. And like you mentioned on our show earlier in the week, you got a ton of shooting, yes. so it's not like you lack it now that now that all these guys have all, you know, elevated themselves, including Gabe Vincent, by the way, which we did not mention. Perfect. Right. So with Gabe Vincent back also, you wouldn't need him. So that's what you do. You don't make a personal move just to take a 15th man on. You make a personal move if someone you feel you need to play rotation minutes. I don't think that'll be the case with Kyle Guy. God bless him. But then on the flip side, and this is blasphemous now, okay? But Deadman gets healthy. Bam Bam gets healthy. The elevation of Yurtsevin... You know, I'm just saying, I know. You, it's a non, you, you the Udonic Haslam thing is a non-starter. I could argue it from a common sense standpoint. You can, everyone can, but we know it's not going anywhere because the Heat won't. So but I'm not going to. He, he can stay on the coaching staff and I'm be available. I'm not going to bang my deal. head against the wall. You are correct that every single name you mentioned contributes more. I'm just not going to do it because they've said, here's the rules. It's like Fight Club. You don't mention Fight Club, and you don't mention Udonis Haslam. I, I, I God, I'm just kid can shoot, bro. I'm <laughs> just saying, might as well throw another shooter in there, you know. And and uh, you know what? It's it's really also the rise of Yurtsevin. That's the thing too, because by the next way, who's year. the who's the, Yurtsevin I know, is the I, next I, year player? I, I know he's the better. I know that Deadman's the better defender, right? But is Yurtsevin the better rebounder? But he's it's a, it's a next year thing. Deadman I, right I, now, I, I, the I, I, moment I, I, of truth, you trust more. Point. Next year, it's like Hassan Whiteside. He had that breakthrough the first year. They trusted him more the second year. It'll be the same for Big O. Then, unlike Hassan, he has to sustain also. Do we have to trash Yurtsevin with the Hassan Whiteside comparison? Hassan Whiteside had a pretty damn good career. And if Omar Yurtsevin has that kind of career, I wouldn't complain either. I, I just I'm just hope I, I just hope Yurtsevin isn't wired the same way. You know what I'm saying? Okay? I don't think he talks to fish if that's what you're asking. <laughs> or leaves uh, semi-automatic uh, rifles uh, in a in a car. You know, to... I'm not going anywhere with that stuff. That's all you. You might be talking about Brian Tannehill's wife there, also. So I too. Also, yeah, she's kind of loose with her guns. Uh, all right. So, uh, Ira, what are you working on in the Sun Sentinel? So uh, story on PJ Tucker and the ultimate example of leadership that you're on a one year contract, a small contract, but you care and you want other guys to sustain their careers. The ultimate in leadership. I'm waiting for the announcement from the NBA later today because you have a game where Portland plays tonight. They will announce the discipline today on both Nurkic and Tyler Hero. So I'm curious about that. I'm curious if there's any words of remorse from Kyle Lowry and he practiced today in Phoenix. I doubt it. So there'll be a little bit of news today. You'll also have a PJ Tucker feature in your local neighborhood, Sun Sentinel, and it'll be published at sunsentinel.com as soon as I'm done with this interview. And by the way, I just thought of it. Hero suspension, maybe you hurry Butler back. Hero stays. Maybe you say, ah, Jimmy, we get three more days. Right. Hero's back. You know, we're we're all right. We got a, a it all it all ties together. Yes. Yeah, it may, it may, it may be. By the way, one more thing before I let you go. I know they're really good at home. They're 17 and four. Uh, are they missing anybody? No, as a matter of fact, Jay Crowder and their other guys who were in protocols are coming back also. That's a Damn hell it. of a lineup with Chris Paul and Devin Booker and Bridges and Crowder and Aiden and what they have. That That's an NBA title contender. It'll be a good test. But you know what? After a week and a half on the road, I think the Heat might just be dragging their heels trying to get back home, and they deserve it. They've done what they needed to do. They took two of the first four. They're fine.
There you go. Ira did his job. You do yours. You subscribe to the Sun Sentinel and support all of our local journalists. And make sure you follow him on Twitter at Ira Heapeat. You have a fantastic weekend, sir. We will talk on Tuesday. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Big O. You got it. There you go. The great Ira Winderman. And next week will be the last week that he joins us on a Tuesday. Because then we'll switch it to Mondays after that. So we'll get to Ira on Mondays now that, uh, unfortunately, I was hoping the football season for the Dolphins would be extended. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it is what it is. What can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? It's a rough one. Anyway, uh, 855-912-1056 is the text line. 855-912-1056. If you want to get in on the program, Acura Pembroke Pines, baby. Make sure you go visit them at 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I-75 and Pines. Make sure you tell them that Big O sent you, folks. They will take care of you. Great people out there, Larry Schlossberg and the folks. Uh, They've been at this for a long time. And for the last uh, 12 years now, they've been the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States, folks. That's why we tell you all the time, get, get on down there and take advantage of all the great lease features, whether you're looking to buy or lease a vehicle, get on down to 15601 Pines Boulevard, just off of I-75 and uh, and Pines, and uh, tell them that Big O sent you. Trust me, they are going to take care of you. They are the finest dealership in the business, and the TLX right now, 2021, you can still get it, $299 a month, 0% financing for 60 months, the 2021 RDX, they still have some there, $359 a month, folks, or 1.9% financing for 60 months. So many great options. Take advantage. Tell them that Big O sent you. It is Craig Zins, Acura of Pembroke Pines. Our number two is next. Oh, great. You have a doorbell camera. Now you have a front row seat to your house getting robbed. They're breaking into my house! Ooh, there goes the TV. I'm sure it'll turn up at the pawn shop. No, not the TV! Just because you can see them, that doesn't mean you can stop them. With slogans, you get 24-hour monitoring, a free home security system, and professional installation. Plus, free doorbell camera, one that'll actually work for you. Get out of my house! Get out of the house! Call 1-800-ALARM-ME. South Florida's premier law enforcement agency is now hiring individuals like you. The Fort Lauderdale Police Department is now accepting applications for non-certified and certified police officer positions. Minimum requirements and qualifications can be found at flpdjobs.com. That's flpdjobs.com. Are you ready? The city of Fort Lauderdale is an equal opportunity employer. When you're ready to purchase a new home loan or refinance the one you have, American Dream Lending will make sure your loan experience is easy with fast approvals and quick closings. With many loan programs and competitive rates, now is the time to turn your dreams into reality. Ask about special financing for veterans. They never charge an application fee and you will work directly with one of their experienced loan professionals. Stop dreaming and contact American Dream Lending today. 786-802-1727 or online at adreamlending.com. When protecting your family is your priority, there's nothing more important than a roof above the people you love. Call Tommy B. Butts Jr. Enterprises.com. 954-735-9826 or 954-394-1411 and ask to speak to Tommy, the owner. They specialize in all kinds of roofs led by their highly crafted, skilled and professional roof mechanics. All of their previous customers have an opportunity to enter their bi-weekly drawings to receive free an exterior impact metal door. Please call for more details. That's Tommy B. Butts Jr. Enterprises.com. 954-735-9826 or 954-394-1411. Trust Tommy to fortify and protect what's most important to you, your family. 
The Big O Radio Show is looking for an experienced salesperson in the radio or TV business. The candidate must have at least five years of sales experience in the broadcast business over the last 10 years. Please email your phone number and resume to Big O Radio Show at Yahoo.com. That's Big O Radio Show at Yahoo.com. Looking for an aggressive person who can help our platform expand into many avenues in our business. Reach out if you are the person that's able to make a difference. The viewpoints, statements, or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group, Inc., Ownership, Management, Sponsors, or Website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. All righty. Hey, hey, hey. Hour number two. We are ready to rock and roll. Appreciate all of you out there. Don't forget, please smash the like button. You're listening to the podcast. Smash the like button. You're watching on YouTube. Smash the like button. You want to chime in on the text line 855 912 1056. That's 855 912 1056. By the way, starting next week, since I'm going to talk a little bit about the crypto market here, because there is a dip going on right now in the crypto market. Uh, Starting next week, uh, we will have a new family member to the team, and we will be broadcasting live from the OK Coin Studios every single day. So you will be watching us from the OK Coin Studios. Yeah, baby. Uh, So Alex Chizik uh, is going to join us. Mandy Campbell is going to join us also uh, throughout the month. And we'll have some crypto interviews with them. Uh, We're going to have also uh, some stuff so you guys can take advantage and and join us on OK Coin and, and start your crypto adventure. You know, as uh, as uh, we have uh, talked about crypto over the over the last uh, year here uh, on the program, and um, obviously you guys know I'm a I'm a huge crypto guy. So OK Coin, we have developed a nice relationship. They are now a proud sponsor of our program. And as you can see there, you got you got a little Bitcoin, you got a little Star Atlas. Star Atlas is the one right next to the Bitcoin. Shib under that, a little polka dot avalanche. Ethereum, a little Matic. There you go. I like it. I like it. I know you have a. I know you have a second one. What's the second? What's the, what's the coins on the second one? Would you would you create on the on the second uh, OK coin uh, um, frame that you uh, created? Because I know you know. Nor, you know, Sean's always working. He's he's always grinding. So the other one. What where you? No, got that was it? the two person one. The two person one. We got to oh, make the other one person one. So we got we can't show it because it's not a two person one. Okay. No, I mean actually, uh, give me a minute, I'll get it. All right, do it. There we go. So OK Coin, proud sponsor of our program, and I'll give you a crypto minute every day, also starting next week. So we've got all of that going on. So the uh, show continues to grow, and our sponsors continue to grow. And if you uh, if your company wants to join our platform. As we grow every day, uh, you can reach out to us. My email is BigORadioShow at Yahoo.com. My Twitter DMs are open at Big O Show. You can reach out to us on the text line, 855-912-1056. And uh, we'll meet. And uh, if you want to become a a part of the program, uh, we are more than welcome to talk to you about being a, a, a contributor on the program. There we go. That's nice, the two-person one. I like it. I like it. And right now, folks, take advantage, man. The, you know, I'm not a I'm not a financial advisor by any stretch whatsoever. Okay. I'm just a guy that loves crypto. But Bitcoin is only going to go in one direction. And that's going to soar. And right now, for me, listen, some of the altcoins you can take advantage. Uh SHIB, right now you see SHIB there. It's down. Polka dot is down. You know, polka dot, you can actually stake on OK coin. It's amazing. And, and by the way, I have a link on my Twitter page at Big O Show if you want to use it. 
and you want to you could get fifty dollars free of Bitcoin in the process. But like Polkadot right now, you can buy it and you can stake it for fourteen dollars and thirty seven cents. I mean, 14, 14, 37 uh, percent is the staking. Fourteen thirty seven. That's 14 percent, man. Are you kidding me? On top of all of that, and right now, Polkadot is at $25, $25.06 right now on OKCoin. And then you stake it at 14%. That's why I always tell you, because if something trades sideways, you're still making 14%. So, okay, oh, it's stuck at 25 at 27 Damn, it hasn't moved in a couple of days. Well, you're still making interest. And then when it goes up to 35 you're going to make even more interest. And you're also going to make money because the coin's going up in value. And so that, those are the things that you want to do. You know, Matic right now, uh, Matic is down because right now there's a dip in the market all over the place. Polygon's down to 209 right now, which is a pretty damn good deal. And then you could go on OKCoin OK and then you can stake it for 1549. So you're going to get 15 and a half percent on staking Polygon. So you buy a little Polygon and then you stake it. So when it goes up, you're making even more money because of the interest you're making and the coin is going to soar. And I think Polygon is going to go to eight to ten dollars down the line. This this year, Polygon is just going to be a monster. Look, I've been talking about this for over six to eight months now. A lot of people were talking about that this was going to be a bull run and end in December. And it didn't happen. And you know why it didn't happen? Because what's happening is what I'm saying was going to happen. That Ethereum is not going to be driven by Bitcoin anymore. And eventually neither is Cardano and neither is Solana and neither is Binance and neither is Avalanche. These kind of coins and Polygon, they're, they're going to soar on their own. They're going to go up and down on their own, just like, you name it, Tesla. Amazon, whatever, man, Microsoft, all the big stocks that are out there that they stand on their own. The, the difference is, and I've been saying this for over six months now, now I've noticed that other people are starting to realize what I've said. The institutional money that's in now was not in, in, you know, a year ago, Three years ago, five years ago, it was dominated by retail, by people like us. Now it's dominated by institutions and bulls. So just like in the stocks, they are dominating. They are the foundation of it, and they're not selling. When you're watching Michael Saylor and, you know, whatever J.P. Morgan tells you, they're doing completely the opposite, you know, and you're watching it all of, and and countries are now – are going to all these countries, all, all these other countries that struggle with their economies and their dollar is worth nothing. They're all going to end up inheriting Bitcoin. And that's it's only going to go in one direction. The thing is, you have your volatility now and the volatility, by the way, thank you. I want to thank the people that are dumping their coins because it's not the smart people. It's not the rich people. It's not the powerful people. They're continuing to buy. OK, the exchanges are it's like this. They're running out of Ethereum. They're running out of Bitcoin to sell. And in five to 10 years, they may not have any more to sell. OK, and then what happens? Wham. So it's just a matter of patience. Hoddle. And, and hang in there and eventually it all pay off. Remember, I'll give you an example. Some of you that bought Ethereum at 3000 at 3500 at 4000 at 4500 you're frustrated right now cuz it's down to like 32 3300 right so you're not making any money right now if you if you bought it at 3000 you're making a little bit if you bought it at 35 you're losing if you bought it at 4000 you're losing and at 4500 you're losing but you don't sell you wait you wait it out and what you do is you buy it as it drops so you can lower your overall cost and then when it climbs, you're going to make even more money, right? But the people that got in late, they're frustrated right now. I say patience. You know why? I have a th my Ethereum is all at 15, 16, 17, 1800. So obviously I'm I'm profiting. But I'm not selling. 
I'm not worried about it because I'm just going to keep it there because it's going to go up to 10,000, 15,000. So why am I going to, you know, panic? I'm just going to let it go. Last year for months, it waddled around 17, 1800. And that's when I kept accumulating, accumulating. People are frustrated, frustrated. I kept accumulating. And that's what you do now. Now that it's down to 32, 3,300, it's a great buying time. Because it's going to go back up to its normal number 45. And it's going to soar way past that. E2 will be installed this year. And once E2 is installed and, and their transaction rates explode and their gas fees go down and as eppi continues to burn ethereum and there's less ethereum available it, it, it all equals one thing explosion okay so patience in the market right now during this dip be take advantage if you want to buy a little SHIB, if you want to buy a little avalanche if you want to buy a little polygon if you want to buy some bitcoin Star Atlas, now's the time to take advantage of those kind of things. And let me tell you, Avalanche is a monster. And I'll give you, I'll give you an example. And you can and you can stake it for 7.6% on uh on on OK coin, okay, which is a really good rate. And right now, Avalanche is down six per seven percent to $87. Mind you, Avalanche was peaking at $123, uh, let's see when, December 22nd. So it, in this dip, you think it's not going to go back up to those 30-something dollars and surpass that? Hell yeah. So you go to, uh, you, you buy a little avalanche and you stake it. So while it waddles, you're still making your 7%, and then when it takes off, now you're making double. Now you're making value on the coin and you're staking. And you're gaining interest. You're gaining more avalanche. You're gaining more e Ethereum. You're gaining more of the things that you're staking. Those are, there's your little OK coin crypto corner. All right. That's your OK coin crypto corner. All right. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, people, be careful. Do not average down or average up ever. That's a bad trading habit. Do not. Well, it all depends on, you know, what we're talking about. But I would completely disagree with Tremolio because I've done that and it's paid off many, many times. You, you're you never going to be able to time a dip and you're never going to be able to time the peak. But on the dip, what you do is you don't buy it all at once. You buy it piece by piece as it goes down. So that way you're continuing to buy because you don't know when the bottom is and then it shoots back up again. But what you want to do is piece by piece, dollar cost average on the way down. That's how you do it. I disagree with him, but, you know, whatever. You know. I, I'm i in the crypto market. He's not. You know, that's a, a huge difference. That's one thing I've learned about Tremolio. His uh, crypto advice. No. Stay away from his crypto advice. Uh, the majority of the media Dolphin fans are very critical of Tua. If we could try to be patient with Tua, he's going to be re rewarding us with some amazing years. The problem is it's it's so many years of frustrations. So nobody, nobody gets paid. Nobody, nobody has any patience for the coach, for the player, for the front office, for the owner. Uh, they they've all lost patience in uh, in in the Miami Dolphin organization. All of them. Uh, Nico says, oh, someone I know that's been trading crypto for years says to be very careful staking your coins. You could lose them. No, 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 no. Where, where is he staking them? Some crap. Or, you know, where are you doing it? Are you doing it with a reputable place? Because when they're stake, you know, when you're staking them, they're in cold storage. So they're off. They're off the Web. So they're safe. They're even your, your money. See, see, that's the problem, Nico, man. Uh, he says if he's been trading for years, then he doesn't really understand it. Then your money's actually the safest when it's staking. Now, here's the thing don't stake, you know, for a month or three months or six months, depending on where you're staking, if you plan on taking it out. Now, if you have no problem and you plan on sitting on it and letting it grow, then 
why are you going to let it sit there and not earn interest? So that doesn't make any sense, Nico. So if your friend is stopping himself from making an extra 4%, 5%, 10%, 14%, 18%, Nico, he's not a smart, he's not a smart, he's not a smart investor. I'm sorry to say that. If he hasn't learned about yield farming, which is a lot more complicated, but a, a great way to make money in crypto, if he's not staking, then he doesn't really know how to play the game. You know what I'm saying? So he's he's losing money by not staking. That's uh, I'm telling you, we're, we're going to end up having some kind of a, a crypto night once a month somewhere. Eventually, I'm going to create that, too, you know, where all of us can get together and we can bring a couple of, of, of uh, crypto investors with me to talk a little bit about it and kind of go through it with everybody and really thoroughly explain things so people can understand what the hell is going on, because that's the problem. There's too much Facebook misinformation out there about crypto and a lot. And, and if you don't, if you, if you're not in the game, then you don't really know, dude, if you don't live it, you don't really know. You can't stand on the outside and, and, and know anything about crypto. If you're not really investing in it and reading about it and know exactly what, what these companies are doing. So, Oh, uh, um, big O, please, please, please explain to detox 90 why tua looks uh underachieved and why burrow and herbert look great please tried arguing with him well then you know i mean it's all there dude it's all on my podcast it's all there we explain it thoroughly what's going on listen man it's we, we're in a world now that no matter what people are going to believe whatever the hell they want to believe even though they have no facts you got a bunch of people that think an election was stolen when they have no facts and every proof that's out there, everything was straight up. But there are a bunch of sore little losing bitches. You know what I mean? Because every four years, there's a group of people that are unhappy with whoever gets elected. But now we get to a point now, you know, back in the day, remember how you had that wussy ass kid that w had to take his ball home because he didn't get picked because he wasn't good enough. It's kind of the same thing now. Oh, we're sore losers. Oh, no, we have to reverse something since, you know, because it was stolen. No, you lost, dude. That's it. Big deal. Every four years, you know, half the people are going to be unhappy with who gets elected. That's just the life. You know what I mean? But you got your people out there that are like, oh, it was rigged. It was rigged. You're an idiot. There's nothing rigged, dude. Relax. Just shut the hell up. You lost. Don't be a little losing bitch. Just shut the hell up, okay? Get a better candidate that can beat a bum in four years. That's all. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And this is the world we live in, that people create a reality that doesn't exist, even though there's zero proof about anything. Oh, no, don't get injected by the, by the uh, vaccine because they're tracking you. Meanwhile, the vaccine's been out for two years. You think they haven't, like, Check that vaccine. Oh, no, because there's things inside of it that they're tracking you. Come on, bro. I mean, seriously. And we got people still that probably believe that. This is the world we live in. That it doesn't matter what the truth is. They're going to create whatever other reality they want to create. That's just the way it is, dude. Can't do anything about it, bro. So the guy that doesn't like Tua and creates whatever narrative he doesn't know that the other teams have better talent and better coaches and better players and all that stuff he doesn't look at that he doesn't care so in his eyes Tua has the same thing that Herbert does and everybody else and so he's got to be just as good or better than those guys and that's just not the case and you're never going to convince anyone that is dead set that way and they're not open to actually what the reality is you know that's what we got mitch says crypto is the future and if you don't know that well you're going to get runned over okay that's all eventually it's just like it's just like cell phones it's just like the internet it's just like email you know what i mean and especially with older people people my age or older you know 
and that didn't happen when I when in my age now, but you know, years ago, I'm sure old farts were like, "Oh, the internet, oh, that's a, a that's nothing." Well, guess what? You can't live without it. Oh, email. I'm not learning email. I have a mailbox. Well, yeah. How many of us really depend that much on the mailbox now? Very little now. You're paying all your bills online pretty much. It's just the way it is. Cell phones. Oh, here it goes. Airplanes. Here it goes. Crypto's the same way, man. Same way. Eventually, it's just ignorance. It's just not knowing. It's not understanding the use cases of it, how it's going to be a part of your everyday life in so many ways. that You have no idea. It's going to make your life better. But you have to learn. You have to educate yourself about that. That's all. Uh, the people who bitch about Tua probably don't remember when the franchise had Joey Harrington, John Beck, and Cleo Lemon, to name a few, says Adam. You are correct. Uh, let's see. Uh, John Russell says, Big O, can you see any truth in the Harbaugh rumors? Dude. Yeah, I can see some a little bit of truth only because of Stephen Ross, but that's about it. But I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think he's just trying to recoup the money he gave back last year. I think this is his age and trying to I, I don't think he really wants to go to the NFL. I think he knows he's not the NFL. But we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong there, my man. Won't be the first time. You know what I'm saying? But. Yeah, I can, only because of Stephen Ross, I can see some truth in it. That's the only reason. And that's so obvious that everybody's going to think that. It's not like I'm thinking anything outside of the box from normal people. But I am thinking this, that normal people aren't thinking. This is all leverage. He beat Ohio State. He won the Big Ten. He got to the playoffs. Get my money back. That's what's, that's what's happening. That's that's what's in my eyes. That's what he's doing right now. He wants to force the hand and say, yo, yo, Michigan, I proved that I am the guy. Come on. Give me my money back. And I think that's what's going to happen this offseason. You'll hear about an extension, yada, 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 all that crap. Big O, when do you see the crypto dip ending? Daniel, I just told you uh, a little bit ago. Anybody that tells you they know when the peak is coming and when the end is coming, never listen to that person ever again. Okay? Listen to me on that one. Anytime you hear someone ever tell you, oh, no, it's going to peak at this or this is the bottom, nobody ever knows. A friend of mine goes to me, hey, should I buy the dip or do I wait for it to dip more? I said, you don't know when the dip's going to stop. So you buy along the way. You don't, whatever money you have, okay? Let's say you have $100 for this dip right now, okay? So let's say buy $20 right now, you know, like last night you should have bought $20 of Bitcoin. And then it went down a little bit more, buy another $20. You wake up this morning, it's a little lower, buy another $20. That's how you do it. You don't buy it all at one point because then it dipped more and you could have bought more. So what you do is you buy along the way on the way down because you just don't know when the rock bottom is. None of us do. That's the game that none of us will ever dominate in, 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 in investing. Not in the stocks, not on crypto, not on real estate. Nowhere, dude. You have no idea when the peak is of anything or the dip. And right now, for like, I'll give you an example. For Bitcoin, okay? I'm looking at it right now, the, the fresh numbers in the last eight hours, you were at 42, 42.2, 42.4, all the way through uh, 8.15 this morning. Then it dipped all the way to 41.5. So you buy again. Then it dipped again to 41.2 you can buy again then it dipped again to 41,000 even and now it's at 42,000 it shot up right away to a thousand so if you ended up buying it at 41 boom now it shot up to 42 you see what i'm saying so i showed you there how you could have bought it along the way and now it went from 41 to 42 so i don't know if it's going to go back down 
or now it's back on the climb again. It's a perfect example of how you never know how you can time the dip. You just don't. But here's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Are you buying Bitcoin cheaper than what you bought it at? Did you buy it at 48? Did you buy it at 52? Did you buy it at 57? So if you're buying it at 42 or 43 or 41, you're lowering your overall price. You're making the right investment. Bitcoin's only going to go one way. And it's going to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And eventually, each of these coins will be worth a million. Eventually. It's going to happen. As countries, Ukraine is next. Ukraine's going to end up using Bitcoin as their currency. So as, as these countries that have terrible economic systems and they don't have the dollar and they use Bitcoin, as their, what do you think is going to happen? You know, use, your, use common sense. Don't listen to the FUD. Don't allow people to get in your brains and tell you because they don't know anything. So they don't follow it. Uh, yeah, Tremolio, 19 to 22 is the bottom. Dude, you said that months ago and you were wrong, Tremolio. Stop with that already, bro. Okay? Like, you know, dude, don't, don't Tremolio, I love you, brother, but don't talk crypto, bro. You know nothing about crypto. You know zero about crypto. You don't invest in crypto. And that you use the same tired line. I hope it goes to 19 to 22 because I would love to buy it at 19 to 22. But I would also love to take your money. So if you want, we can we can lay a wager. You know, if you want to lay a you want to lay a little wager, we can lay a wager that it won't go to 21. I won't even give you 19, 22 if you want. Won't go there. And I'll bet anything you want on that. I'll take your money, bro. Like taking candy from a baby. Love your music stories. Love your your input. Your crypto knowledge is FUD. You're part of the problem. That's the thing. People that know jack shit about crypto should not talk about it. To be blunt. All right, my brother? Much love. Don't talk about crypto. You know nothing about crypto. Zero. Zilch. Uh, I think the Tua Nears place too many excuses for Tua, and the anti-Tua's exaggerate his play for being bust level when he has really been in the middle of our record shows that. Dolphin Dynasty, you might be right. You might be right. Us Tua guys, maybe we're too homerish. And the Tua haters, maybe they're too cruel. Time. That's why I keep telling you, time. Let it go. Relax. Build everything else, and he'll be fine. Okay? Big O, I'm a longtime crypto investor. What projects are you bullish on? You see the ones to uh, my, uh, I guess when you're watching, it's my left, right? All those right there. I love Bitcoin. Star Atlas, that's right next to it. Uh, that one, you got to hold. It'll be a year from now when it pays off. But you can buy it cheap right now, 9, 10, 11 cents. Really, really cheap. That that met, that uh, metaverse game is going to explode. Uh, Shib, Shib is uh um I'm I'm not a like I'm not a meme coin guy, but this one's going to go to Robinhood now, and it's going to and it's going to go up. Polkadot, I love the parachains are now added. They're going to explode. Avalanche is a monster. Uh, Ethereum, obviously big. Matic, um, let me see. Let me give you. Uh, I love V Chain, and V Chain's been waddling. For months now. And you know what I do while it waddles? Collect, 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 and sit. Collect, 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 and sit. Hodl, hodl, hodl. That's what you do. You got to use patience. Uh, CKB I like. And CKB is now under two cents again. It's at one nine, which is a really good buy right now for CKB. Inoperability is going to be a problem in the in the in the in the in the um, in the blockchain to connect all of these blockchains, and that's what they do. And they're going to be as the Cardano, uh, which Cardano is another one that I'm a monster on. As the Cardano ecosystem starts to take off in 2022, as people have been patiently waiting for it. 
uh, CKB will be a main culprit in making sure that everybody in the in the ecosystem is connected to each other. So CKB, I think, is one that's also going to take off. I like CKB. Um, obviously, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Polygon, Polkadot, Cardano. What else? Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, do I like, even if I'm not invested in it, because I don't have any Avalanche. I missed out on the Avalanche early, so I, I didn't get in it, but Avalanche is a monster. I missed out on Solana, and Solana is also going to be, uh, it already is, but it's going to grow. And Solana's down to 140, and that thing was over 200. So Solana's also very good uh, investment. Chainlink, I thought, has been a great deal in the last couple of weeks where it was at 19 and 21. Now it climbed up to 26. It's the number one oracle on on, on, uh, on uh, the blockchain. And it, it, all of these companies are going to have to use Chainlink. They have no choice. So Chainlink is the monster. They will blow up. It, it will go. Chainlink is one of the better bargains that was out there. Uh, Cosmos is another good one. Algorand is a good one. Phantom, I think is fantastic. Um, Decentraland, I've been talking about them for a while. Theta, I like, I'm invested in Theta. I like Theta, I'm invested in Decentraland. Um, what else? Elrond is strong, not invested, but strong. Harmony also been talking about Harmony for a while. I've had Harmony since it was at nine and ten cents and eleven cents. It's at thirty one now. Monero been telling you about Monero for a while, and in this dip, Monero went up to two twenty. It went down to one eighty nine. I told you get in on Monero. It went up to two twenty. It went back down to one ninety eight. So watch out. All right, let's uh, talk a little canes. With our Canesware Miami Hurricanes report, Manny Navarro is next. If you're a Miami sports fan, then there's only one store to go to, and that's Canesware at Miami Fanware in Davie. They're your one-stop shop for all your inner Miami CF, Canes, Dolphins, Panthers, and Marlins merchandise. They have hats, t-shirts, game day jerseys, and so much more. Located at 2511 South University Drive in Davie, and open 24-7 online at Canesware.com or innermiamiware.com. Call them at 954-835-5597. Canesware, the spot where inner Miami and all Miami sports fans shop. The viewpoint statements or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group Inc. ownership management sponsors or website. Time for Canes fans to get what they want. Information, insight, and perspective. It's the Canes Wear Miami Hurricanes Report with Manny Navarro. Exclusively on the Big O Radio Show. Here's Big O and insider Manny Navarro. All right, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. That is Manny Navarro. How you feeling, man? How you you feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling yeah. good, man. Thankfully, I uh, didn't catch COVID. I thought I was worried that uh, I had had gone out to uh, watch a Monday night football game, the Dolphin Saints game uh, last week uh, or the week before, and and uh, my buddy ended up testing positive, and I said, "Oh man, this is all I need." But I never got sick, so I quarantined for a couple of days, and I made it out all right. All right. So, uh, did you test yourself? I did. I went and got tested, did a couple of in-home tests. Uh, you know, they tell you you're not really supposed to test till you know, four to six days after you're exposed. I have uh, both shots. I have the booster. Uh, thankfully, it looks like I dodged a bullet. But, my, you know, my kids just went back to school this week, and they're already telling me about teachers catching COVID and, and being sure, ruled dude. out. And, you know, it's just uh, it's one of those deals. It's, dude, it's the inevitable that we're all going to get this one, it looks like it. Because this yep. one is, you know – uh, it it looks like it's it's spreading like wildfire. This one spreads like the flu, actually. Yeah, it's, you know, and really and if, and if you're boosted or you're 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 immune, or at least you have your shots, at least it won't. You know, it looks like it's not that bad overall. You know what I mean? Uh, obviously, every DNA is different, so you never know. But mm -hmm. crazy stuff. All right, man. Let's get to uh, the Canes. We've been talking about, hey, when's the coaching staff, the coaching staff? Well, it looks like it's finally coming together, man. Talk to us a little bit about some of the changes. Yeah, well, every all the announcements as far as, um, you know, what I've been saying as far as the coaches who were getting, getting jobs uh, weeks ago, you know, Alex Mirabal, they finally announced it yesterday, the offensive line coach and assistant head coach, Brian McClendon, the receivers coach, co-offensive coordinator, um, 
and then Aaron Feld, the strength coach. Um, they've still yet to uh, announce uh, Joe Salovea, the, the, the defensive line coach. Um, I know there was some reports out there about uh, Mastro, the running backs coach from Oregon, coming over here too. I had heard a couple weeks ago that it was iffy because he had a sick family member and uh, it was a situation that was more about family for him. So he didn't end up coming, uh, even though it was reported by some outlets that he was coming. So, um, you know, I, I, I was told Wednesday and again today by different people on staff that I've spoken with that they expect the, the, the rest of the coaching staff to be finished out by this weekend. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's, that's good. And um, is that because some of them are still working or something or what's the deal? I, I, I think, I think without question, you know, look, the NFL season wraps up this weekend, you know, um, there's some, some guys I think with NFL interests, I, Clint Hurd is a name that I, you know, former, former hurricane and uh, a guy who was on staff here that's with the Seahawks is a name that, that I've been, that, you know, I've been told in the past as potential DC, um, you know, um, Glenn Schumann's coaching Georgia. He's a co-defensive coordinator over there. He's a guy from the get-go that I was told Mario liked a whole lot. So, um, you know, as far as defensive coordinators, um, those, those are two of the, two of the names that I'd heard. Both of those guys seasons should be wrapping up shortly. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, yes, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Mario is exhausting uh every possible second and again there's no reason to rush they're not hosting guys on official visits till january 14th to 15th till next weekend so you have the rest of this week and the beginning of next week that you can wait to to get these things done and let those guys finish out their seasons and uh before you before you make any announcements so when's the first story on the dude with the mustache coming? Because obviously, you know, you, you, you got you got you got to do a story just on the mustache for the yeah. uh, strength and conditioning guy because that's just glorious. That much, I mean that that's well, got to take at least an hour just to prepare. It 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 does. And I had Andy Staples who works with me at the Athletic. Uh, Andy, of course, is is one of the best writers in college football. He he actually went and worked out. With Aaron Feld at Oregon, we have a we have it up on my podcast, the Wide Right Podcast, uh, and he's sort of talking about it. But you know, this is a guy who is is cutting edge. You know, his his whole thing is about ex explosiveness and making guys explosive, even linemen. Um, and Andy played at Florida. He was a walk on offensive lineman at Florida, and he went and he did a workout with him where he was basically using these elastic bands. And you know, carrying these weights on his shoulder and trying to jump up, you know, and just trying to like uh, increases his explosiveness. So, um, you know, he's going to use some unique cutting edge techniques. Uh, this isn't an old school guy who's, uh, just sitting there saying, Hey, we got to lift weights and be big and burly. Uh, you know, I had a conversation, uh, with Alex Mirabal, Miami's new offensive line coach this morning. And we talked about how, you know, what matters to him is athleticism. They don't want big burly off, you know, it is. Yes. Alabama has huge dudes, right? Like Crystal Ball yeah. recruited a bunch of huge dudes. Oregon had some good dudes, uh, on the offensive line as well. But to them, it's about athleticism, right? And, you know, people don't realize, and, and you probably do, oh, because you, you've known Mario for years, but Mario was big into jiu-jitsu. Like him oh, yeah, and martial yeah, yeah. arts, yeah. like yeah. to them, it's it, it, like when they look at a lineman, they don't look at it like I need a 350-pound guy. I need – it's more about the way that they get themselves off the floor and the athleticism, the, the way that they carry themselves down to down to down. So I think, you know, Aaron Feld is, is going to build football players – with much more about athleticism and explosion than, than weight and size. All right. Is he, is he the guy that like, uh, you know, is he considered like uh, one of the ultimate badasses in all of this or what? Well, yeah. Think? I mean, the, first of all, the, the mustache alone makes him a badass, right? I oh, mean, everybody, yeah. everybody sees that and they are it's automatically boring. impressed. According to Andy, um, you know, he, he, <laughs> He, he started growing the mustache. His wife didn't like it. So that's why he kept it just to bother her and annoy her. <laughs> so, um, and, and, you know, it's a signature thing. And, and, you know, one thing about Aaron is um, he, he builds his own sort of, or he, he did this at Oregon when he first got there was build sort of his own contraptions for stuff, you know, like stuff that, you know, most of these guys could order equipment from work from wherever. He's the kind of guy who goes to home Depot and buys wood and buys all kinds of stuff and like custom makes the, the some of the machines that he will use to train his guys that's how into it he is and so i, I i'd love to do that with Aaron. i'd love to go to home depot with him one day and yeah. see what he does in building these uh contraptions and uh you know i want, to, get a I want, I want him to film the morning he prepares his mustache <laughs> 
<laughs> there you that's go. what's got to be on film. I got to see him preparing that mustache. I mean, that's. We're, we'll ask him. We'll ask him if we can get that done. Oh, we'll see if we can get that on film somehow. Yeah, dude, that that's really what it's all about. And and <laughs> and did he ever talk to Raleigh Fingers about it? You know what I'm saying? I mean, did right? He, did he? Did he? I mean, who did really, he study? Who did he study? Right? Yeah. Like who? Is he is he part of a barbershop quartet? <laughs> you know, these are these are these are the questions. Those that are the pressing inquiring questions. Inquiring minds want to know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, Absolutely, help us a few bars there, Aaron. Please, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I've, I've grown out a beard before, oh, uh, but never to that length—a mustache to where, where it's curling out and 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 shapely and all that kind of stuff, like like an evil genius. But he, he looks like an evil genius with that thing, man. What can I tell you? No, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's again glorious <laughs> to be able to do that and to have the 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 discipline to do that every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because think about it. There's no way he wakes up in the morning and that thing's all like, you know, all over the place. No wonder his wife hates it. Like when she <laughs> wakes up, she looks at him and what's that porcupine in your face? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, that that's the other picture we need. All right. So how's it look when you wake up in the morning and that thing's like this, you know, it's like, said, I'm going to, I'm going to jot all these down uh, for questions for Aaron. when We finally get a chance to talk to him. Yes. Yes. Cause I don't know how many people have gone in depth to find out about all of that. Cause you know, it's like, does it get in your way when you're sleeping? Right. Are you, are, do you accidentally sniff your entire mustache up your nostril? Right. You know, all these kind of things, you know, does it get in the way of you eating? You know, <laughs> right. uh, uh, how do you brush your teeth? I mean, you know, do you have like, like thing like rolling down your, your, your mustache while you're brushing your teeth and there's foam going down, you know, now we can get gross. You know what I'm saying? These are things that these are things that I want to know that you know, while you're carrying that thing around, that's got to get in the way of something. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it does for him. Um, but hey, listen, it's never stopped him from uh, from doing his job the right way. Um, I've yet to. Hear and I don't want to get personal in the bedroom with the uh, no. wife. You know, no. just... maybe maybe she maybe he says she doesn't like it, but maybe she really does like it. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it's you're a good mystery. It. You're washing it extra after food and sex and all kinds because that, that thing's got to last in there. <laughs> smell and right. I'm saying there's, you know, the mind goes in many directions here when we're talking about that mustache right now. Uh, okay, so you say recruiting, as yes. we digress here, uh, recruiting uh, it doesn't start again till next week. Are we hearing of any, you know, because he's already done some thievery? Right? Yeah. Yeah, there's so gonna be there, some kids. So. There's already gonna there's gonna be some more thievery. I think this weekend with the uh, All American game, um, you know, there's some guys that uh, are gonna be announcing Cyrus Moss, a defensive lineman out of Las Vegas, Bishop Gorman, um, and Kevin Coleman, a receiver out of St. Louis, uh, St. Mary's. Both of them are top 100 recruits. Both of them are guys that Miami feels really good about uh, going into this weekend. I think you know if I were to handicap it. I would say I, I think Kevin Coleman is probably 90% there with coming to Miami. Uh, I would say Cyrus Moss is probably closer to 50-50 if you want to handicap it. All right. Is the uh, old lineman leaving finally for UM? Is he going to the draft or not, Zion? Still still don't have an answer on Zion. Uh, Mirabal hey, still your, doesn't have an answer on Zion. You? What's your gut tell you? My, my gut tells me he comes back because I think – you know, he's not a bona fide first or second round pick. Like nobody's talking about him that way. So I think the kid is smart. His mother's smart. Um, you know, she's she's big on school. She wants him to graduate. Yes, it'd be great for the family to 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 have that NFL money. But I think, you know, the kid could probably benefit from one, one more year at Miami. And 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 look, uh, Mirabal and, and Cristobal are two of the best in the business as, as far as offensive line coaches are concerned. So his they value will get up. Yeah, yeah, he could be a first or second rounder with a really good uh, senior season at Miami. What's uh, what's how excited should we start getting about the upcoming season? In a way, what would you tell fans? What are, I mean, it's I know it's not your job to like, you know, tell people how excited they should be, but. How realistically can how much can they realistically improve? Can Mario do in this offseason to get to next year? What's the what's the realistic stage you think that they should reach? At least win the coastal? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's more than fair. I think winning the division is more than fair. I, I think 
you know, to me, it all comes down to the defensive side of the ball because I feel like offensively they're going to be very, very good. I think the offensive line is going to be better. You have the majority of that offensive line coming back. Better uh, coaches. Better <laughs> coaches. Um, at more of an emphasis on the running game. You're going to have a healthy running game uh, with Don Chaney coming back. Um, I, I just think offensively they should be stellar. Um, defensively, it's the pass rush. Can you Can you get those pass rushers? You know, losing Jalen Phillips and, and Gregory Rousseau, having those two guys in two previous years, you could see the drop off in in the defensive performance. And, and Roche, right? Um, you know, you give up fourth and fourteen at Florida State because you don't have a oh. pass rusher who gets there. If you if you have Jalen Phillips or yeah. Gregory Rousseau playing in that game, you beat Florida State. You beat them. I'm sorry, you don't give up fourth and fourteen there. Just keep twisting that knife in my heart. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, brother, but it's the truth. And you know what, though? It's got to be, no, wrote... be like Notre Dame, right? Third and 44. <laughs> right. I, I wrote this in my story today. I did a Sunshine State 7 ranking for the final year, kind of a recap and a look ahead for all seven in-state teams. If if Miami stops Florida State there, Manny Diaz is probably still the coach. They would have won their last six games. Maybe. Maybe. Wow. So so we got so we had to go through hell to get to heaven. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I gotta ask Rudy Fernandez that question, by the way. I gotta ask him that question. I don't know that he'll answer it, but we'll see. Yeah, I you know what? In a way, I, I kind of feel after my uh, 12, 10 and onside experience, I had to go through hell to get to heaven too. Also, yes, so. you did. You did. I, I can <laughs> I can relate uh to all of that, my brother. I can relate to all of that. All right, uh Anything else that I'm forgetting that uh, Canes fans need to know about this week that's already happened? Hey, hell of a job by the basketball team, man. 12 and yes. 3, eight, 8 in a row. Larenaga yeah. and those guys deserve a little bit of love, right? I mean, oh, they uh, deserve that, a lot of that. I mean, it's an even level playing field nowadays. It's not right. like college teams are loaded with stars and, you know, it's college basketball is a lot. That The reason why I, it, it doesn't entice me that much anymore. <laughs> right. Was, no, it's, it's not, it's not the same so quality. I felt so bad the other night we were at Larry Little's um, Hall of Fame dinner and, and we broadcasted from it. Okay. And Leslie Visser, you know, she comes on and, you know, she's just an angel and she's super talented and obviously a legend in our business. And she tells me, oh, you know, I just was covering college basketball. Does it, you know, do you enjoy it? And I, and I had to kill the vibe completely. I'm like, no, after you lived, uh, you know, Alonzo Morning and, Patrick Ewing and Michael Jordan and all these kind of guys. And they played three, four years. Uh, this college basketball does nothing for me anymore. And that's my only problem about it. I know Larinaga is a great coach, so I'm not surprised there. The good thing for Larinaga is that he might have a better chance at actually making a deeper impact in the tournament nowadays because nobody's loaded with stars anymore. So it's up to great coaching. And he definitely is. Yeah. And and picking up that Charlie uh, Moore kid who's like a sixth year player. He's, he's been at four different colleges. Uh, that that's that helps guys like him. Right. I mean, the honest to God truth, man, is like a lot of these kids that enter the draft, they should just stay. Just stay in school, bro. Like, I mean, how many of them honestly make an impact every year? Like, just stay in school. Zero to none. Yeah. Zero to none. Yeah. And that guy and that guy's like, um, um, Damn, what's his name? The uh, the kid that um, oh Stephen Blake. Mm -hmm. Stephen Blake was the first free agent in high school, a Killian kid that went to Miami Lakes, who then went to Miami High, and then went to Oak Hill Academy, all in high school. <laughs> yeah, he was in the transfer portal before anybody else, brother. Yeah, dude. He <laughs> Stephen Blake invented the transfer, the transfer portal. portal. Yeah. Okay. That was him. Right. We should call it the Stephen Blake transfer portal. But we, it I, I, to be I remember it because he was he was playing in Killian, you know, playing, you know, whatever yeah. uh the ninth and living and I think living in Key West, right? Wasn't he taking or a plane? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And 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 Schaefer was the guy over at uh at um at Killian, right? Was it Schaefer? No, not Schaefer. Um it, it was, was a guy who was supposed to take over for Schaefer that, that Shaky beat him out. Now I'm right. forgetting his name now. That's what it was. Schaefer was the Miami high coach. Correct. And then he had those two assistants, right. Shaky and then the other gentleman. And the other gentleman went to Killian. And, dude, he was so pissed. I'm forgetting his name now. He's a hell of a coach. Yep. He was so pissed that Blake went to Miami Lakes yep. to, play, to play with Corciani 
Yeah. And, no, no, no. It was after Corciani, right? It was just after the Corciani group. It was after Corciani, yeah. Yeah, it was Corciani after was in the mid to late 80s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was after Corciani and uh, Munoz and Rudy Glass. Now, uh, now, uh, now I can't remember his uh, name and you're killing me. I'm, uh, I got to uh, figure this out. I got to figure out the, the old Kaufman. About Kaufman. 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 Maybe. Coach Kaufman. Yeah. How about that, huh? Yeah. Huh? Look at the memory. Huh? Look at the memory. Huh? You got it. Got you got it. Memory. If I could tell you Rudy Bird playing with Corciani and Munoz at Miami Lakes, you I could definitely. Yeah, and and you know what's terrible is that Kaufman all these years still still because he's a huge Canes fan, right? Oh, yeah. And he still messages me, and I, and I just remember him as K, and I couldn't remember the last name. Coach K is what I used to call. Him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and hell of a coach, bro. Hell of a coach. Right. And, and let me tell you, he never let that go. That Shaky got the gig over him. At oh, Miami. absolutely. All these years, never yeah. Never let it go, dude. Never let it go. But uh, yeah, yeah, Blake, Blake, Blake invented the transfer portal from back in the day, dude. That's just some crazy stuff. But yeah, La Larry Nega is absolutely amazing. He really is. He's just uh, he, uh, he's and they endured a lot of crap, man. The Adidas thing killed them for a while with recruiting, and uh, and now uh, they're they're finally getting back together and and winning games. Although Saturday we'll find out for real how good they are because they got number two Duke on the road, and that. Uh, That'll be a, a hell of a game for them. Even if they don't win, as long as they show up and play well, I think that'll be an encouraging sign. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. They got four guys that can play, so I think uh, they they got a shot in that game uh, to to give them a, a nice run. That should be a fun game to watch. What are you working on the Athletic now, owned by the New York Times? <laughs> yeah, we're a subsidiary, is what I understand. That's uh, we we still have our own editors. We're not uh, being edited by the New York Times. We're operating on our own, still just owned by uh, the New York Times. Uh, that should be finalized, I think, in, in the next few months. But, uh, you know, I, I'm working on uh, – well, first of all, I spoke to Coach Mirabal, so I'll be doing something uh, with him on a story. I think this weekend we're going to have a couple of uh, recruiting announcements. I just put put up a story this morning, uh, the Sunshine State rankings, ranking UCF number one in the state, Miami number two, and uh, going – you know, kind of looking ahead to, to the next season for all of those teams. So, yeah, I mean, there's pl there'll be plenty to start reading. I, I just got cranked back up uh, this week with work and, and making phone calls and, and working on stuff. So there'll be there'll be content coming in the athletic again after my little Christmas break. And you never know. You might see a little bit more Manny here. I, I don't know. You, you, know. you might. We might. We might see it. Think, think, things <laughs> might develop here. You know, we expand. So, you know, you yeah, never know. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Just because others don't want to grow with us. They ain't going to stop us from growing. That's for damn sure. No, Manny, no. much love, my brother. I appreciate you, as always. Follow him on Twitter at Manny underscore Navarro. Make sure you subscribe to The Athletic because it's not just Manny. It's just a, a slew of terrific reporters locally and nationally and even internationally covering everything in sports. So uh, subscribe. It's always a great deal there. I appreciate you, my brother. We'll catch up next week. Thanks for having me on, brother. Talk to you next week. You got it. There you go. The great Manny Navarro, baby. From The Athletic. Love it. If you're a Miami sports fan, then there's only one store to go to. And that's Caneswear at Miami Fanwear in Davie. They're your one-stop shop for all your inner Miami CF, Canes, Dolphins, Panthers, and Marlins merchandise. They have hats, t-shirts, game day jerseys, and so much more. Located at 2511 South University Drive in Davie. And open 24-7 online at caneswear.com or innermiamiware.com. Call them at 954-835-5597. Caneswear, the spot where inner Miami and all Miami sports fans shop. Oh, that's the man, the myth, the legend that is Manny Navarro. And uh, I hope to have some uh, some news next week on more uh, expansion for the show. Uh, we'll see. We are uh, we are talking to many, 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 many people and adding uh, all kinds of uh, members to the family and more expansion. So. It's uh, it's only going to grow the platform. That's that's the, that's my intentions, and we're going to keep doing it. And uh, you know, all you know, what we ask is that you join us for the ride. That's it. You know, smash the like button whether you're watching on the on the YouTube or you're listening on podcast. Hit the notification bell. Subscribe. You know, if you want to make a donation, Cash App or Venmo, Cash Big O Show. Visit our great sponsors, Tommy B. Butts Jr. Enterprises. You're seeing it right there. Tommy is amazing. Folks, you got a little leak in your roof. You need some work done. 
Maybe you need your roof inspected. Maybe you need an entire new roof for your business, for your home. It doesn't matter. Either one, Tommy B. Butts Jr. Enterprises. Right there. You see it. 954-735-9826. Call them, and they take care of you anywhere here in South Florida, folks. All right? Tommy has been at it for over 25 years. Triple A plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. And what I love about uh, Tommy is that all the work is fully guaranteed with the customer's complete satisfaction. That's how you earn a triple A plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. And not only that, his customers are happy. His customers' families are protected. Their businesses are protected. And, and once you become a customer, each of their previous customers have an opportunity to enter into their bi-weekly drawings to receive a free exterior impact metal door. So you want more details? Call them 954-735-9826. That's 954-735-9826 for Tommy B. Butts Jr. Enterprises.com. Right? Call Tommy. He will take care of you. By the way, we uh, expect Omar Kelly to join us. At some point in hour number three, not don't have a, a specific time yet because he's got some things to do. Uh, Dougie Fresh says, oh, can you please do a dedicated music segment or music show? Here's a first question. What are some of the best first songs or last songs on an album? Maybe first Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. Wow. It's a great one. Well, I mean, Iron Maiden, I'm going to go with Number of the Beast. I mean, that's just uh, to open up with that. Um, Motley Crue, open up with Shout at the Devil. Let's just get devilish in our first two. Um, Van Halen, Running with the Devil, right? Am, am, am I not correct? I think it opens up with Running with the Devil. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'll go Van Halen. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling on your way. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Anyway, sing a song. Think about sunny weather. There you go. Oh, ACDC, yes, Hell's Bells. Oh, my God, how do you not start off with that? That's a great one. Back in Black starts off with Hell's Bells? Yeah, definitely. And you're right about Black Sabbath. What is this that stands before me? Um, First song, let me see. I got the, the thing is also I've got to now remember you also have to remember the first and last songs. But then again, it's a great question, Dougie, because if you remember the first song or the last song in an album, then that's pretty damn memorable. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things that just kind of sticks to your mind because you've played it so much. So it's actually a really, really good point. Opening uh, track of Paranoid is War Pigs. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, in your opinion, is rock music as popular as it was in the 70s and 80s? If not, why? Oh, uh, no, it's definitely not more popular than it was in the 70s, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Because I'll still give the 90s. The 90s was still a pretty good um, decade for rock. It's the worst one from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. The 90s is the worst one out of the four, but it's still good. I mean, it's a thousand times better than anything in the 2000s. And we're now in the third decade of the 2000s. None of those decades come even close to the 90s. Forget the 80s, 70s, and 60s. So, no. And your reason why? It's because you don't have enough great bands. That's the reason why. That's what lacks it. All right, let's uh let's go hour number 3. That is next. 
South Florida's premier law enforcement agency is now hiring individuals like you. The Fort Lauderdale Police Department is now accepting applications for non-certified and certified police officer positions. Minimum requirements and qualifications can be found at flpdjobs.com. That's flpdjobs.com. Are you ready? The city of Fort Lauderdale is an equal opportunity employer. I think I know what this is. Houston, we have a package. Hello? No matter where you are, the Sloman Shield Home Security System guards your home. With next-gen perimeter protection, 24-7 monitoring, and interior motion sensing. And right now, get a free Sloman Shield Security System and doorbell camera, all professionally installed, for free. Shield your world, the Sloman Shield... There's no need to drive around South Florida wasting valuable time looking for a new or certified pre-owned Acura. Go to the number one volume sales dealership in the Southeast United States. Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. Purchase with pace and space in a dealership tailored to your needs. From home buying to providing that personal touch. Contact the 2020 Satisfaction Award winner Craig Zinn's Acura of Pembroke Pines. 888-776-5123. That's 888-776-5123. Or visit them at 15601 Pines Boulevard in Pembroke Pines. The Big O Radio Show is looking for partners to join our growing platform. If your business is ready to reach an audience that starts in Florida, crosses the nation while expanding internationally, this is the program that provides that vehicle. The Big O Radio Show is ready to broadcast live anywhere in the world to represent your event or product. To reach out by phone, 786-754-4664. That's 786-754-4664. Or email BigORadioShow at Yahoo.com. Help us grow as we provide the content and personal connection corporate entities will never achieve folks you can support the hardest working sports talk show in south florida through cash app or venmo just search cash big o show support us through cash app or venmo cash big o show we thank you for your incredible support if you're a miami sports fan then there's only one store to go to and that's caneswear at miami fanware and davy they're your one-stop shop for all your inner miami cf canes dolphins panthers and marlins merchandise they have hats t-shirts game day jerseys and so much more located at 2511 south university drive in davy and open 24 7 online at caneswear.com or inner miamiware.com call them at 95 954- 5597 Canesware, the spot where Inner Miami and all Miami sports fans shop. The view and statements or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, Media Group, Inc. Ownership Management Sponsors, or website. When it comes to South Florida sports teams, very few in the media have witnessed, lived, and covered it like the Big O. Let's start the program dedicated to your favorite South Florida teams with a passion that's unmatched. The Big O Radio Show is on. Here's the Big O. Back, baby. We're ready to rock. It's our number three of the program. Omar Kelly is set to join us here on a beautiful Friday. We wait for Omar Kelly. We got lots of things to talk about. Dolphins and Patriots. On Sunday, final game of the season, unfortunately, sad. Uh, 425 will be the start. We will start our pregame show at 225. I mean, the only positive is we get to sleep in a little bit, Sean. <laughs> That's about it, right? We get to sleep in a little bit. Oh, God. But anyway, so we will be on at 225. So come on out and join us, man. Final game. Um, I'm, I'm already planning for next year uh, with the sports grill. And we'll be in Doral, okay, uh, for next year. That was the plan, no matter what happened, okay. Even if we ran the table and won the Super Bowl, we weren't going back to Bird Row. We were going to go to Doral, okay. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to go to Doral, and we'll be there every week next year. And we got some stuff that we're already planning. It's going to be, we're going to make it a nice big old party, okay, every week during the season. Uh, we will have a, a, uh, a uh, Super Bowl show uh, at Sports Grill. That's coming. So on Super Bowl Sunday, you can expect us to do a, a little uh, broadcast leading up to the game. So uh, we'll tell you. Uh, I don't I don't know. I, I think it'll be the Bird Road one. It might be Miami Lakes. 
I'm not exactly sure. I'm not the boss. The customer is the boss. They will tell me. But uh, I think uh, we will be doing a, a uh, Super Bowl show in a couple weeks. So that you can uh, guarantee that we'll get that going next week. And then, uh, I mean, next month. And then we've got, we'll see. Next uh, next week, we might be uh, be able to to uh, do something else there, as always. Um, by the way, somebody, uh, Sudo, uh, um, I think it was Sudo. He says, he's, I think he said uh, something about, don't you need good stats to win the Super Bowl or something like that? And um, and just so you know, Peyton Manning sucked. Okay, so Trent Dilfer isn't anything. Brad Johnson was a nice quarterback. You don't. Re Sometimes you don't need to be special. That's kind of why you. That's kind of what I talked about in hour one. That we're all focused on. Not all. Some of you are focused on one guy when there are so many other things broken that would actually make that guy look good and if you fixed everything else that really would not be the problem and to think you know because i also saw on the text line hey wouldn't you take marino's wins now and a trip to the super bowl yeah that's nice but what does it mean see that's the problem if you didn't live the marino stuff you would say those kind of things but if you lived it like i did i still I'm still pissed at Marino's run because they didn't do enough for him. <laughs> you know how I tell about Tua? Okay, well, I need him to get a line. I need him to get a running game. I need him to get real coaching. And then he'll win. Well, Marino, so he won a bunch of games. He made the playoffs a few times. He got to the Super Bowl once, but he didn't win anything. And why? Because you didn't help him. So for me... As entertaining as Marino was, his tenure is frustrating the hell out of me because I got to live with the fact, and he's got to live with it even worse, that he didn't have a shot at really winning a Super Bowl. And personally, it pisses me off that Marino didn't win a Super Bowl. So while you settle for what Marino's career was, it's not enough. It wasn't enough. Marino deserved better. You deserve better as a fan. All you fanatics that travel with the team all over the place, you all deserve better. I think I said that in hour one. The Marino era was not good enough. We're not aiming to just be a team that gets in the playoffs. You want to be a team that is an impactful team year in and year out. That's what you used to be with Don Shula. That's what you want to get to. You don't want to get to the point where you could just put up points and win a couple games and get in the playoffs. That's not enough. I need more. I need a lot more than that. I'm tired of watching Tommy and Hialeah and Dolph Freaky and NorCal and all of you great fans out there. I'm tired of watching you all travel, spend a lot of money, and not celebrate a damn title. I'm not asking for six, dude. I'm not asking for two. I'm not asking for 20. I'm not asking for a dynasty. I'm asking for Big E to go celebrate a damn Super Bowl. Just one. That's all. I just want the fans that love this team like crazy, you all out there that watch this show a lot and care about the team like I do, man, I just want to be rewarded one time, man. That's all I'm asking. That's it. Please. Just give me a title. You know, I'm, I'm, I feel for everyone that, that loves this team and wants to win. But it's not about be, building a team that can just get into the playoffs. We, ha we had that, right? Adam Gase got into the playoffs. Tony Sperano got in the playoffs. Wanstead got in the playoffs several times. Jimmy got in the playoffs a couple times. Big deal, dude. 
It's not about that. It's about building a team that can make an impact in the playoffs. It's not about building. It's not about finding a quarterback that can score 40 points and entertain us. And then what? And then what? I sit in a corner and watch somebody else in the Super Bowl? Oh, but no, you know, they entertained us during the year. That was good. No, that's not enough. So, no, it's not enough. It's not enough. What ha- what what has happened in the last 30 years of Dolphin football is not enough. What's happened in the last 40 years of Dolphin football, not enough. 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, or teens, or whatever the hell you want to call that second decade. The last 40 years, Dolphins football has not satisfied the fan. Those are the facts. They've entertained at times. They've given us some good moments. But they haven't done enough. And if any of you think that what the Dolphins have done over the last 40 years is ultimately acceptable, then you have very low standards. I don't need a team that teases. I don't want a woman that teases either. Big John Stud 007 says, Big O, and thank you for the super chat, sir. Great show as always, speaking facts. It's funny how they want to put the blame on Tua when in reality Brian Flores and his staff crapped the bed. Yep. They're the not it's not Brian Flores and his staff are a joke. Okay? And it's a joke if you bring them back. That's what it is. It's an absolute joke if you bring that guy back. Why would anybody bring that guy back? But if you want to get fired next year, you bring him back. That's all. I know I've seen this story before. I know how it plays out. Uh, but thank you, Big John Stud. Appreciate you, man. And don't forget, folks, please smash the hell out of the like button. It is very, very important you smash the like button every day that you're watching. Uh, It is something important for our show. It gets the algorithm going. And for those of you, by the way, we have thousands and thousands of people that are listening to the podcast. Uh, For those of you out there listening to the podcast, here's a message for you that, you know, to help our show. Not only do you help our show incredibly, by listening every day and supporting but if you haven't subscribed to our show on youtube even if you don't do a lot of youtube please come on over to youtube or even open up an account really quick and subscribe to our show help us get to the ten thousand subscribers that's another way that we can grow so please if you want us to grow and add more programming and all that kind of stuff it's going to take those kind of things not just sponsors but all those kind of things to help. So please, if you can, go to YouTube, subscribe uh, to our show, and uh, and hit the notification bell, too, at the same time. Uh, Coque Garcia says, Big O, with X being selected to the Pro Bowl, are the Dolphins likely, likely to keep him on the team over Jones? I think they're going to trade him this offseason. That's my idea. I don't know. Tremolio says uh, to the Finns, as Uncle Neil used to say, enough of the sucking. He's right. He's right. Carlos says, my take on two is simple. I don't know. He may have it. He may not. I just don't know. What really pisses me off is that we are here after all this crap we've been through. Again, can't argue with it. Um, Let's see. Kyle says, is there a community in Miami where young guys can set down roots, and grow with the team over years. This is important to not lose our talented youngsters. Kyle, it's all about the organization and coaching staff creating the environment that they connect with players and help them get better. That's really what it's all about, my brother. You watch the Miami Heat, and they create the environment. And they're, and, and they're demanding as hell, right? If you're a lazy player, you cannot play for the Miami Heat. Right. If you're looking to coast, 
this is not the team you want to sign, and they're not gonna, they're not really gonna want you around as it is. So it's really all about and 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 it's pretty it's pretty cool that the Heat walk that fine line that they're hard asses. You're gonna have to bust your ass, right? But on the flip side, the players that are there, they love the organization because they're wired that way. So, you know, if you're all wired the same way, then everybody's going to get along. One of the things when we were, <laughs> in fact, Sean and I talked a little bit about it yesterday, but, uh, uh, you know, when we were putting together, you know, onside and uh, Sean and I, like, like we, we, we can't have any lazy people like right away. And it's like, and you know, it was during that time only happened a couple times, but once they were identified, they were eliminated like right away. Cause I, I can't tolerate laziness. Like there's no, I, I have zero tolerance for laziness, zero. And Sean knows it, you know, because we're both wired the same way. We're old school, bro. We grind. We don't point fingers. We don't cower in a corner. We don't, no, 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 no. Find a way to get it done. That's what you do. And that's what that organization is all about. So if you join it, you create that environment. And that's what the Dolphins have to do. They have to create the environment that people care about winning. But it also takes the coaching staff that can reach its players. And you have a head coach that has a problem with communication. He has the Randy Shannon disease. Randy Shannon sucked at communicating. Overall, period. Not just his players, coaches, human beings. It didn't matter. Randy Shannon has no people skills. And that hurt him as a coach. I believe Brian Flores lacks people skills. And if you lack people skills and you don't understand people, then you're going to have your Minka situations, your Kenny Still situations. And Kenny Stills, by the way, you know, I know Minka, I think it looks like he can be a little bit diva-ish and all that. Kenny Still is like a really good dude. And he created a big old stink and even showing him up playing Jay-Z music and everything during the practices, which again, kind of an a-hole move on his part. So you you want the environment? It's really up to the coach. Jim Laranega, he creates a great environment for his players to succeed at the University of Miami. Whether it's fatherly, whether it's discipline, whether it's demanding, whether it's, you know, um, what's it called? Um, detailed. Whatever it is, there are demands, but there's also a culture in place. So I ask you, is the culture in place in Miami? Are coaches happy? Are players happy? Is there continuity? Big John Stud, once again, a studly way of uh, giving a donation again. He says, uh, me on Dono's show, you, Omar, we all said put the game on Ryan Tannehill, amoeba defense, and zero blitz him to death. They did nothing. That's why I say they crapped the bed to me. They're trying to make two of the scapegoat. I don't know. I don't know if they're I don't know if they're that smart to make, you know, do that. I just think they're bad. They're a bad coaching staff. You know, it's a terrible coaching staff. Duke Johnson, okay, which it would have been so beautiful. Okay, because you know, uh, you know, I, I like Duke. I love Duke. I got no problem with him. And but you, I've labeled him. You know, he's a pass catching back, and we've had that fun conversation that some of you still believe he can be a an every down back and all of that. That's what I was saying this week in Tennessee. I was I was like, wait a minute, he's popping some runs again. Feed him, make it a little easier. Didn't happen. Seven rushes for forty nine did not give you the. The idea that, you know what, maybe we should run the ball a little bit more. Maybe we, you know, we've had enough of the 39s and third and tens. No. No, of course not. No. Come on. Brian Flores loves 39s and third and tens. Makes all sense of the world. 
Meanwhile, they're giving Tannehill third and one and 35, third and six. Manageable. So I, I just think they're a, they're a terrible staff. They just are. Kevin G says, I think it's because Ross guaranteed Greer and Flores to have four years because of first war together. They dumped the whole roster and gutted the organization and never built it back right. I think they are building it back right. I just think you have the wrong coach that, that doesn't know how to set up the chess pieces. That's really what it is. I think that the team is being built up right. You know, but again, if you have the wrong people in place coaching it, you're not going to get the, the, the results you want. Pseudo Spike says, I'm no big fan of Flo and not saying he's untouchable, but I don't think he deserves the majority of the blame. And you know what, Sudo, you might be right. You know, hey, listen, man, it's sports talk. Okay? None of us have all the answers. None of us know all the answers. And we're all going to assess things the way we see them. And then we're all going to give our opinions. And then in time, we find out if we got it right or we got it wrong. That's all. And in time, Sudo, we will find out, my man. Lisa uh, says, to have the feeling of the Dolphins winning the Super Bowl like I did after my Dodgers won the World Series after 31 years, I can't even imagine that feeling. It would be a dream come true. I'm with you, Lisa. I'm with you. And I hope I'm there celebrating with all of you. Uh, Mr. Spock says, Finn's offense is flawed from the ground up. What is the identity of the Finn's offense under flow? When a team doesn't know what they're doing, it manifests itself on Sundays. You're right, and you know, it's a great point that Mr. Spock brings up because they at least have developed an identity on defense. And that, because Flo at least knows some defense. But you're right, because of his weakness on offense. Nelson says, Big O, we've been mediocre for so long. How many more games do you think we could have won with a stud running back? I think they should sp uh, – zero. Zero. A stud running back does nothing for this team. Nothing. You're talking about what, maybe Barry Sanders or Ricky Williams? Okay. Maybe something like that. It has to be a super freak that it has to be a Rick James of running backs in order for you to really even win an extra game with this team. Without an offensive line and a coaching staff, you're not going anywhere. Okay. Tremolio says, Flo in his last interview looked uh, perturbed like he got some bad news. Maybe notified of firing uh, or threat to make next year happen. Whatever. After 50 years following the team, I'm done not watching in 2022. Damn, Tremolio. That's a little rough, dude. And Joey C says, they're a terrible staff, and it begins with the head coach. The Black Mamba says, Big O, just imagine how I feel. I'm a Chargers fan. That's uh, that and Justin Herbert lighting the league up. Exciting to me. Seen it with Rivers and Fouts. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But that team's a little better right now than, the, you know, at least for now. They, they, I mean, it's too early to say that he's going to be Rivers or Fouts. First of all, hopefully he's not. Hopefully he's not Rivers. Hopefully he's more like Fouts. Rivers gave away the ball a little too much. Uh, too many interceptions in my eyes in Rivers' uh, career and in moments that there shouldn't have been. But you hope he's better than Rivers. But you also hope that, you know, if you're a Chargers fan, that he has a better overall team around him than, than, than Fouts. Rivers had that one year where that defense was pretty good. And at that point, lights out wasn't uh, busted for the steroids and all that. And he was on a roll. And uh, if I remember, they completely crapped the bed in the, uh, in the playoffs. Big O first 425 uh, game at home in a long time. Wish we were contending today would have been epic needs to improve offensively. Hopefully get one of the offensive coordinators from the 49ers. We'll see big Stan, big John stud again with another super chat, dude, you are awesome. You are on a roll. Thank you, sir. Says last but not least, I started on Alex Donald's show. You're trying to blame Tua for the loss, but at least 527 drive 
We started inside the Dolphin 10-yard line. Well, we're starting on their own 40 almost the entire game. Or he stated, okay. I, I don't know why he's talking about Dono's show. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I don't mind. I mean, I love Dono, so I got no problem with that. For now. That that part of it is kind of confusing. Uh, you know, you're on this show. I don't know what, you know, all that other stuff, but okay. Uh, I feel like the Miami Dolphins should be rebranded to the Miami Mediocres because that's what we've been for most of my life. Two Extreme says, we can't run an RPO offense without a good running game, and we can't have a good running game without a good O-line. Why is it we can't see that, but the people in charge can see it? Can't see it? I mean, they're stupid. Only an idiot runs an RPO without being able to run the ball. <laughs> the RPO is no longer a threat if you're not running. It's asinine. Big John Stud again says, tell Sean Stanley, I say, hello, guys. You're my favorite show. Always keep it real no matter what. Keep up the good work, Big O. These fans don't get it. Thank you, Big John Stud. You've been very studly today with all the super chats. Appreciate it, man. Very nice. And you can also send in a uh, donation, by the way, through Cash App or Venmo. All right? Cash Big O Show. We get 100% there on that on those. Here on YouTube, they take 30%. So. By the way, let me talk a little bit about Hub Arkish. You know, first of all, give me 30 seconds. All right. Let me uh let me drink a little honey, Junior. Uh, give me 30 seconds here. And I want to get into a little bit of the Hub Arkish comments uh, about Aaron Rodgers real quick here. Back with more. When protecting your family is your priority, there's nothing more important than a roof above the people you love. Call Tommy B. Butts Jr. Enterprises.com, 954-735-9826 or 954-394-1411 and ask to speak to Tommy, the owner. They specialize in all kinds of roofs, led by their highly crafted, skilled, and professional roof mechanics. All of their previous customers have an opportunity to enter their bi-weekly drawings to receive free an exterior impact metal door. Please call for more details. That's Tommy B. Butts Jr. Enterprises.com, 954-735-9826 or 954-394-1411. Trust Tommy to fortify and protect what's most important to you, your family. Ah, we're back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just enjoying a little honey and lemon, thanks to you all. Because you all helped me with that. A little honey and lemon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've always heard it, but I never did it. And then you guys kept mentioning it, and obviously... And if you noticed, uh, the, the voice is held up pretty damn well. Thank the Lord. Thank you. Knock on wood. It's actually good, too. Tastes good. A little honey and lemon. Or maybe I just got used to it. I'm not exactly sure. So... We um we saw what happened now with uh, Hub Arkish, and Hub came out, and let me tell you. First of all, um, I want to say first that I I like I, I've liked Hub Arkish for a long time as a writer, as a as an NFL guy. I think he knows his stuff. I think he's done a really really good job um throughout his career, and listen. That doesn't make him perfect. Uh, no one is perfect. I'm far from perfect. I've screwed up a whole bunch of times myself. Um, this is one where I think he should regret what he said. Now, he apologized uh, for it. For those of you that don't know, he did apologize for his comments, which he should apologize for his comments. And let me see if I can uh, read them for you. The AP, by the way, will not take away Hub Arkish's vote. Now, Hub said that because he and he said it, you know, that he wasn't voting for Aaron Rodgers even from the beginning of the season. He was never going to vote for Aaron Rodgers because he's a jerk and all that. And Rodgers had the reaction uh, and he talked about, you know, he's called him a bum and and it's all about him not being vaccinated. And maybe it is. 
about being not being vaccinated. Now, Hub is also a Chicago guy. You know, that's the other thing that I just wonder that, you know, he's always covered. He's always been a Bears insider type. He's always covered the league, but he lives in Chicago, works for the score, uh, sporting news. Or, you know, he's he's a legend in our business. He's been in the business for a long, long time and uh, and does a good job. Uh, but this was not good. This was not good. You know, you have to separate the two, even if the guy's an asshole, but he's a great player. You know, he, you, you can't take away the talent, okay? And now, there was something interesting that the AP said about not stripping the vote from him for calling him the biggest jerk in the league and all that stuff. He says, we're not going to throw out his ballot. Barry Wilner of the AP told the Chicago Sun-Times, Wilner has overseen the voting process for the organization's NFL awards in roughly three decades, choosing who does and does not get votes. More than a decade ago, the AP selections became official NFL awards for MVP, Coach of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year, and Defensive Rookie of the Year. For MVP, because the word is valuable, it's judgmental. It would be unfair and unwise for us to set any parameters for that award, Wilner said. We can't tell people how to think about what they consider most valuable. Now. In a way, you do have a point that if you lied about the vaccination and you then put other people at risk, you're not being a good teammate, right? But here's where I have a problem with all of that and where I have to let it slide completely. The NFL is the one that let it slide. So the NFL has made its bed and it's got a lie in it. So I can't blame Aaron Rodgers for lying about the vaccine. I can blame the NFL for being irresponsible about it. I can blame the NFL for, dude, Antonio Brown gives you a vaccine card. You're not going to check it. Really? Really? We're supposed to take Antonio Brown's word for anything. Right? Come on, man. You see the, the whole thing with the Guerrero? This loser, you know, Antonio Brown's such a piece of shit. He, he's just a terrible piece of shit. Okay? I, I get stuff stuck to my shoe that's more valuable than that piece of crap. So he's screaming at the top of his lungs on social media. Oh, they're charging me this, the trainer, and and, oh, and they're not even training me. And, dude, you just left the place. And then Guerrero tweets out to him, hey, you know, and he, you know, texts to him, and he puts it out in public, which made him look even more like the idiot and the just animal with clothes on, which is what he is. Because I don't think there's a human being there. It's just like an animal with clothes on, you know. And... This moron is, you know, complaining about it. And here's Guerrero going, uh, A.B., wish you the best. I'm sorry that you, we can't go go forward and we understand. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, where would you like me to send you the rest of the money? The guy was never keeping the money. But, but guess what Guerrero is? Super smart. He got the money ahead of time. That's what, that's what that whole thing stood out to me. I was like, Guerrero's a smart dude. Everybody else works for AB and doesn't collect till after. And uh, Guerrero's like, no, 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 give me the money up front. And and Guerrero obviously is going to give him the money back because he has credibility and so does Tom Brady and so does Bruce Arians. Antonio Brown has no credibility. Antonio Brown is nothing. He's garbage. That's all. And the laziest thing we're doing now is calling him just say, oh, no, he needs help. No, dude, he doesn't need help. He needs jail. He needs lessons. He needs an ass kicking. That's all he needs. I, that's what I've come to the realization. He's not crazy. He's just an asshole. He's a piece of crap. He's just about himself. That's all. He's an ignorant fool is what he is. Nothing more, nothing less. 
Stop with CTE. Stop with crazy. Stop with any of that. Sometimes people are just bad human beings. That's all. End of story. Nothing more, nothing less. So going back to the Hub Arkish story, he screwed up and he should have his vote taken away. I know they don't want to do it, but again, I'll tell you the things, I'll say things that most people are afraid to say. I think the AP looks at Hub Arkish and says, He's been such a great member for a long time. He's contributed to the league for a long time. He's been highly respected for a long time. I'm going to I'm going to look up his age. I'm going to say cuz I'm 55. I'm going to say Hub Arkish is either in his late 60s or um early 70s, okay? Let me see if um, you know, I, I, I kind of assume that everybody has because I, I don't have one, but I mean, I kind of assume everybody has like a like a Wikipedia page. But uh, I guess I guess it's not. I guess I don't have it here. Let me see. Um, I don't know where it is. Uh, um, Well, I don't, I can't find his age here. I don't know if somebody knows off the top of uh, a top of their heads, or knows how old he is, but he's got to be up there somewhere, right? So, this is my thought on him. He's pretty close to retirement already, as it is. So let's just let him finish it out. What's what's left in his career? Another year or two, or whatever. So let's just let it go and. And why kind of disgrace him at this point? And I think they're going to tolerate it for that. But, and I'm a fan of Hub Arkish. It was wrong. You you can't think like that. You can't have preconceived notions about that. You can't, you can't do that, man. It's just wrong. The guy's had a hell of a season. How How is he not your MVP? You know? Sometimes you got to give it to the person. And in the end, even the whole vaccination thing, it it's not like it ended up costing them the season. They're in the playoffs. They're top seed. They're, they're ready to rock, man. They got a shot like anybody else at this title. Hard to not label him the MVP, especially with the season that he's had. But there's no doubt in my mind as much as I like Hub Arkish, he cannot do that. And I know he apologized and everything, but you, you just can't. You can't. And you ended up sounding just like a bitter old man. That was the worst part about it. Because it just kind of, you, you kind of came off like that bitter old man. Got to give the guy credit for what he is. Man. He's a hell of a player. Uh, let's bring up Aaron Rodgers' um, response to Hub Arkish. I know you have it there, Mister uh, Stanley. Let uh, let's play um, let's play Aaron. Um, after what you said last week about what it would mean to win your fourth MVP, what what do you think of one of the fifty voters coming out and saying yesterday, "quote." I don't think you can be the biggest jerk in the league and punish your team and your organization and your fan base the way he did and be the MVP. I think he's a bad guy, and I don't think a bad guy can be the MVP at the same time. I think he's a bum. I think he's an absolute bum. He doesn't know me. I don't know who he is. No one knew who he was probably until yesterday's comments. But, I mean, to and I listened to the comments, but to say he had his mind made up in the summertime, in the off season that, you know, I had zero chance of winning the VP. My opinion should exclude, you know, future, future votes. Um, you know, his problem isn't with me being a bad guy or the biggest jerk in the league. Cause he doesn't know me. 
He doesn't know me. He doesn't know anything about me. I mean, I've never met him. I've never had lunch with him. I've never had an interview with him. Um, his problem is I'm not vaccinated. You know, so if he wants to go on a crusade and collude and come up with an, an extra letter to put on the award just for this season and make it the most valuable vaccinated player, then he should do that. But he's a bum and I'm not going to waste any time worrying about that stuff. He has no idea who I am. He's never, never talked to me in his life, but it's unfortunate that those, those sentiments, it's surprising that he would even say that, to be honest, but yeah, I knew this was possible. We talked about it on Mac a few weeks ago, um, but crazy. There you go. I, I can't, I can't disagree with the guy. You know what I mean? Can't disagree with him at all. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay. All right. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, all right. Uh, Carlos says maybe Rogers lied because he did not want it to be a huge story. And he made a personal decision. The lie is bad, but it's a symptom of a bigger problem. Media attacks you when you do not toe the line. You're a liar. Dude, they attacked, uh, um, um, what's it called? Herbar Habarkish for his comments. But, of course, you're going to get attacked, Carlos. Dude, if, you're, if, if you don't want to vax, then stand up for it. Don't be afraid. Right? I mean, if you're going to... At least, then don't lie about it. That's the, you know how it, how they say the cover up is worse than the crime, and that's the problem, Carlos. You can't get past that part. So the the world is whether you vaxxed or you didn't vax. Simple. And plenty of people that didn't vax stand by it, and believe it, whether they're right or wrong. But if you're not going to vax, then stand by it. If you're going to cower and hide, then maybe you don't. Maybe, maybe Aaron Rodgers, maybe he doesn't have the conviction that you think he has. He's just doing it for whatever reason. Maybe it's political. But if you believe in something, then you stand for it. And you take the heat, right? You Let me ask you something, Carlos. I do this show for 31 years. Do you think it's popular that I got on the radio and when they hired Joe Philbin, I said, this is going to be a disaster. This is a terrible hire. Do you think that's popular? Just wondering. No, it's not. It's it, you, your, your fan base loses their mind because I just shot down the guy they just hired. It's not fun, but you got to stand by it, right? You got to take the heat. Oh, we signed in Domicon Sue. Well, I stood up and said, this is a terrible contract. This is not going to change anything for the team. You know what I took? A lot of heat. So if you're going to stand for something, have the cojones to stand for something, whether you're right or wrong. But at least have the conviction to stand by it and not waffle and lie about it. So that's where this goes. So I disagree with you a thousand percent. Okay? Because if you're worried about persecution, then you shouldn't do it then then you obviously have no conviction in what you're doing. But I clearly do my job with conviction, with passion, and belief. Now, I may be wrong, but I'm not going to shy away from it because, oh, I'm afraid of the backlash. By the way, Carlos, who's the only person saying that Flo and his coaching staff aren't very good during the winning streak. You think that's popular? So, 
you know, uh, what I would say to Rogers and anybody else that doesn't want to vax, well, stand up for it then. Stand up for it. Don't lie to people. And you shouldn't lie to people because that's irresponsible. Because now you're hanging around people that are vaccinated and you're acting like them when you're not vaccinated and you're putting other people at risk. So it's a lie. It's irresponsible. And he deserves every bit of heat that he got for it. And Hubarkish deserves every bit of heat he got for saying that in the offseason, he had already decided before the season even has been played. That is unacceptable. And he got the heat. And he deserves to get the heat. So, Carlos, you and I are completely disagreeing on this one. Big O, did you ever like doing play-by-play? -play? Did you ever do it in your career? Must have been very cool. I did it for baseball for the minor league Yankees in Fort Lauderdale. And I did it um, also in boxing. I, I, did, I did do play-by-play -play in boxing. Not a fan of it. Not really what I want to do. So it wasn't a direction that I was ever going to go in. You know what I mean? So I, I like talk show. I like watching and talking and covering sports and interviewing and, and you know, breaking stories and, and all that kind of stuff. I like the interaction with human beings. I like the discussion, the disagreements with human beings. And I'm also opinionated. And you cannot be opinionated if you're a play-by-play -play guy. You have to, you know, call the game, kiss the ass, and shut the hell up and take the check. And that's just not my style. You know what I mean? Just not my style. Never been my style. So I can't do, I can't do that. You know? I would be Harry Carey on radio. And you can't have, Harry Carey would never have a job in today's world. I don't even think Mad Dog can ever have a job in today's world anymore. You know that? How about that? You you cannot be that honest. You can't say the stench of cow manure hovers over the performance today. You know, it just those kind of things. <laughs> it's just nah, not anymore, bro. I mean, they've gotten so ultra sensitive now. No. So um, not something that I ever really enjoyed, to be honest with you. This is what I love to do. This is what I have a monster passion to do. And so does Omar Kelly, who joins us next. The Big O Radio Show is home for the hardcore Dolphins fan. That's why we give you Omar Kelly twice a week. Buckle up. It's time for the EJDeconstruction.com Miami Dolphins Report exclusively on the Big O Radio Show. Back and there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. He's trying to figure out. You figured it out? You got it going? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. Just checking with you. Yeah. Sorry about that. I've been grinding away trying to do some end of the year things like look at free agents and totally, totally, totally lost track of time. You uh, sir never have to apologize for doing your job. It's all good, baby. It's all yeah. good. Beauty of digital is we adjust. That's all, bro. We adjust. So that's the that's the beauty of this uh growing platform, uh, Omar. Which is a, a beautiful thing, my man. How you feeling? You feeling good? Uh, yeah. Um, difficult day. Uh, my, we're burying my grandmother on uh, tomorrow, but you know she passed a while ago. Um, scared for the COVID elements because a lot of my family members are in the older category. My grandmother had twelve children, so all of her twelve children, most of whom are in their seventies or 60s or 50s are are going to be there so uh it's going to be mask up masking huh? up oh Everybody yeah no 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 up. we'll definitely be masking it up yeah mask and space and uh that's probably what will happen and uh and it's opened out at least so uh our our condolences of course on behalf of everybody I'm sure out there is uh thinking the same thing uh my man 
So I know that's uh, going to be a tough one for you. So sorry to hear about that. That's all good. <clears throat> um, let's uh, let's get into a, a little Miami Dolphins talk. You know, I was talking about this. Oh, and I, I, I find it kind of funny and unrealistic. And so, you know, people are talking and, and say, well, let's see what Tua does this week. And it's kind of funny to think that we're going to judge – anybody's career on one more game when dude, the problems are so much deeper and in one game or even in a one season, not a player really doesn't tell you who they are. You know, no. you're going to need several seasons to actually figure out, is this player good? Is this player bad? Can he be consistent? Can he handle pressure moments? All these kind of things yeah. that you learn about a human being over time. I just find it funny how some people are clinging to this game, thinking that you're going to get something positive or negative. Like if Tua throws for 500 yards and four touchdowns this week, it doesn't mean jack shit, dude. No, it, it, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not going to really change. The sad thing about Tua is that after a season and a half, I don't even know how many starts he's had now, maybe 22 most people have kind of formulated their opinions about who he is, what he can become, um, the, the upside, the potential, the warts, and, and that includes the Dolphin organization. Sure. Um, you know, they're not overly thrilled. And I understand why, because it's the same reasons and conclusions that I, I, I came to or, or opinions that I came to when I when I saw him first practice here in, with the Dolphins. The very first practice, I was like, oh, that arm's going to be a problem. And, you know, and then we know about the durability issues. Now we've got cold weather, you know, games, wet ball issues, um, which doesn't necessarily mean – you know, he can't address it or fix it or overcome it or, you know, that coaching can't compensate for it. But, you know, they have their opinions of who he is. And there are going to be three quarterbacks that are out there that are, as Pat Riley would call them, whales. And Dolphins, as should most teams, are going to shoot their shot. And we see what comes of that. But ultimately, I think two is going to be here. Uh, if, if you know, the Dolphins just don't completely view themselves as a team that's ready and willing to move on from him. But I think he's going to be here. Now, does that mean that the marriage is good? No. I mean, Tua's caught you cheating on him. Uh, Tua, you know, knows you don't love him. And so if, if I'm with somebody who doesn't love me, I'm not, I'm not going to be begging him to love me. I'm, I'm probably going to be start looking, looking elsewhere. Well, I, you know, and I don't think he'll ask for a trade, but I will say this: Lee Steinberg's going to have some kind of serious conversation with these. Oh guys yeah, the absolutely, I mean, no question. He's, he's going to sit down, going, "Yo, what the hell is going on here?" It, you you cleaned it up because I'm sure well, it includes well, an F word. Yeah, no, if, I'm if, sure if he hasn't had those conversations already. Yeah, I, I mean, Lee Steinberg have... is no is no joke. Right. This, right. This ain't this ain't like some you know. Willie Lump Lump agent. No, no, no. And that's why I'm saying that he's he's going to call and say, like, what's going on? You know, this guy has no... It ain't going to be what's going on. Right, It's yeah. going to be what the bleep. Yeah, yeah. And they, they got to they gotta come up with answers. And this is a very uncomfortable situation for Brian Flores, as was the, the Xavier Howard situation, because, you know, Howard has some control, some play. And quarterbacks also have some control. But now Lee Steinberg's also going to have to find a suitor because there's going to have to be enough, a home for Tua right. and an interested team for Tua if you want to just say, um, you know, and, and, and that's something I'm sure he's been shopping for and will shop for under, you know, uh, 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 you know, in, in behind closed doors. I'm sure... There are teams that are going to be out there that are interested, but, you know, won't be paying good freight for him. Um, and Dolphins have to consider whether or not they want to consider that, explore that, what are their options, who are their options. Um, there's going to be a lot of quarterback movement. I believe 
Garoppolo's going to be moved. Kirk Cousins is going to be moved. Russell Wilson's going to be moved. Aaron Rodgers is probably going to be moved. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. About, I don't know about Cousins. Yeah, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of guaranteed money. Cousins is going to be moved. So I, 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 I believe, I believe you that they'll try. I don't know if they will end up. I, I think the he's going to be. Money. I think he's going to be moved, and he's going to get a new deal. And and you can sit here, and that's what the word on the street is. You could check in on your word on the street. No, um, I haven't checked in on anything on him, but I'm just wondering. Who the hell trades for that guy with the guaranteed money? I mean, oh my God, he, he might cool be. He Garrett, might, be, cool, he might be some team's fallback plan. Just so you know. Okay. All right, I can see. Uh, I can see. Uh, not, and, not and, here. And, and get a new four four year, a hundred million dollar deal. He Kirk Kirk don't, Kirk don't play about his business now. Yeah, yeah, but wow, somebody gonna be that stupid to give him that money? Go ahead. Knock yourselves out. I like Kirk Cousins, but he's a nice quarterback, not a difference maker, bro. Uh, as, as we maker. as we debated last week, if you got a top fifteen quarterback, that quarterback's making twenty five million plus a year, yeah. and right. Right. and he, he gets you he gets you in the dance, and that's all these teams care about. Yeah, no, he's you know, he can be average. You're right. He can. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, you're either going in this league right now. You're going with. Um, a Kirk Cousins or a Justin Fields. And I know which direction I'm going. I'm going in the Kirk Cousins direction. I'm not I'm not going in the Justin Fields direction. And that's where this league is right now. It's Jimmy Garoppolo or Kyle you know Kyle Wilson. You know, Kirk Cousins or Justin Fields. That that's where the chasm is. It's like either you get this expensive retread or you go with young, bad, and 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 promising. <laughs> Joey C says, "Bro, we riot if Kurt is brought down here." LOL. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I would riot. I would. Uh, my head would explode if they would sign Kurt Cousins on this team. That's for damn sure. I, the, the bottom line is: is, is he is he better than Tua? Yes or no. I'd rather take the chance on Tua than him. Okay, and I, I'm not. I don't. I'd rather build with Tua. The problem is you got to build, and that's where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the build, the building is wrong. I, I definitely agree. Let me ask you something. Has anybody asked uh, Flo about the wet ball issue, and did he have wet ball practices? They had because... wet ball practices. They had glove practices. They had. They prepared for it, but. There's, as it was explained to me, or the way that I got it, you can practice wet ball. You can't practice wet frozen ball. In wind. Did, you, did, they, did they have practices with a wet ball? Yes. Right? You could practice wet ball. You can't no, practice. No, 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 no. You, you said you can practice. Did they say? Yes, they had practice. Had wet ball wet. practice. Yes. So, he, so then Mike Kosicki was lying. No, 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 no. Mike Kosicki said they didn't have. Um, kind of a rain game. Plan. They didn't have a rain game plan uh, in terms of like, okay, if the elements became tr problematic for the game, so then why yeah, would you? And that I, found you practice, that I found troubling. Why it, would you it, practice with a wet ball if you're not going to do that? That doesn't because, make any sense. You can't say that you didn't have a plan, and then they. No, 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 no. The, in terms of the game, you, you know, um. I, I, and I have to ask around to other coaches, you know, people are in coaching, so they're not in their season. I, I, I'm just curious. You knew the elements were going to be a factor and there's only a limited amount of time in the week and there's limited amount of time that you actually have players on your campus, which means they only come on campus to practice and then go home, practice weight lift and go home and, right. and treatment and go home. So you know, it's not like you have an abundance of time to throw in, hey, if it rains, this is how we're going to gear down our offense to kind of guard us against, you know, that you, you only have a certain amount of practice time. So, but I did find it troubling that they didn't do that, but they did practice with a wet ball. To a practice with a wet ball. So, but it, it, as it was explained to me, there's a difference between practicing with a wet ball and then practicing with a frozen wet ball 
in windy conditions, which is what he faced. I mean, that was the worst elements that you can face on a, you know, except for there being snow on the field. I, and, and I think I'm sure some people would rather there just be snow on the field as opposed to there being rain. And, you know, it, it, it's a very hard element to play in, which is why you saw only Ryan Tannehill throw the ball 18 times. Now, if you got to throw the ball 38 times, you're probably going to have problems. You, you're going to be – you're going to find yourself in trouble. Wait, and, so what, if, you, if, you, if you don't run, how in the hell are you supposed to do that? Yeah, but I, I hate when people say that because – when you really dissect that game, they didn't have any more opportunities to run. They had one possession in the third quarter, which they did run the ball. And by the time they got the ball in the fourth quarter, they were down 21 points. Like, what, what with eight minutes left, like, how much running do you think you could do down 21 points with eight minutes left? And that drive, they actually did run two times. And that drive ended with the P.I. call to Devontae Parker. So, just a, so many different elements happened in that game. It was just a, a, a snowball of of crap. Because, yeah, they did run the ball effectively in the first half, but they had one possession in the third quarter. Like, the defense did not allow Miami to get a second possession. And it's not like the possession in the third quarter was a small or short or ineffective possession. It was like a 12-play drive that ended with a 53-yard field goal miss, and that was a byproduct of the sack that Jesse Davis allowed. So, you know, it was a – everybody keeps putting this game on Tua. It wasn't a Tua problem. It was an everybody problem. Mike, uh, Michael Pilardi, you know, he's responsible for the first touchdown because in two punts he, he – and special teams, they gave up 40 yards. Like yeah, two punts, you know, the, the exchanging punts, you give up 40 yards. Like who the hell does that? Like it, it's it, it's irresponsible. You know, two fumbled the ball three times. He threw one interception. Interception didn't really matter in the fourth quarter. But the run defense got dominated. The page, the, the the New England killed time of possession because the run defense was crap. That's on you know, Raquan Davis, Christian Wilkins, the edge setters. Uh, you know, Elandon Roberts. Let's not act like they didn't fail this team in, in that game. It, right. it, our focus is on quarterback because quarterback is what sells to people and gets clicks. But I'm sorry, Devontae Parker was targeted 14 times. He came down with three receptions. That's not good. Right. Like, you, you can't sit here and say, oh, Tua played horribly. Okay, tell me who played well. Name somebody who played well. You know, Xavier Howard allows the slant, poor defensive call, but allows the slant to AJ on third and whatever that gets him in the field goal territory. There isn't a single person on that team who did not play poorly, but it's all to his fault because quarterbacks oh, get know, all the credit I, and all the praise. Yeah, I talked about that in the first hour that there's too much focus on one guy. Yeah. When everything he play, else. He played bad. He played yeah. bad, he, but he name me like somebody crap. on offense that played well. Nobody. Nobody played well, and, man. And, and, and as I wrote Nobody. in a column earlier this week, yeah, we're focusing on two have one bad game. Well, horrible, 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 horrible game. Okay, how many games has anybody on offense outside of Jalen Waddle? and I'll throw in Mike Gesicki. Did you read my Mike Gesicki column, by the way? Because I want yeah. to discuss that. I, I almost had a heart attack. <laughs> hey. When I discovered it myself, I was like, holy crap, you just screwed yourself as a team. Not that you could kind of avoid it. If for people who don't understand. Um, explain, by the way. Yes, explain. I was going to say. Huh? Yeah. No, explain. Yeah, they for, for those who don't there. understand, I wrote a column that basically the Miami Dolphins just screwed themselves on Mike Gesicki, who will now, without a doubt, become an unrestricted free agent and test the market and go to somebody who really values him um, because the Dolphins have used him more as a receiver the last two years, which basically means if they put the franchise tag on him for $11 million, he can file an appeal and will likely win the appeal and say, hey, I'm not a tight end. I'm a wide receiver. I'm used more as a slot receiver and used more as a boundary receiver than I have been used as a tight end the last two years. 
Therefore, by default, I am a receiver, and it's a $7.5 million difference in the franchise tag. What happens is what I'm told is the arbitrator usually meets in the middle, which means if the Dolphins do place a franchise tag on them, they'll be hit with, it'll probably be for $14 million, which is probably what he can get on the open market. So now if you decide to tag Mike Kosicki, instead of signing him to a contract, which the market is now between 12 and $14 million for him, or, you know, or, or exposing him to the free agent market and, and being the highest bidder, but he has basically control. So it's basically Mike Kosicki gets the last laugh in all of this. He has won which is what I always want for free agents. And and maybe, again, maybe they knew this was coming, and that's why they drafted Hunter and said, well, he'll sit for a year, and then next year he'll be elevated and become uh, the guy for us. Maybe that was the plan all along. Yeah, it probably was. And and, and as as we have discussed and argued and fought for for nearly two years, me and you, I'm not paying Mike Kosicki $12 million. If I'm giving somebody $12 million, it's going to be a real playmaking wide receiver, not Mike Kosicki. Oh, I don't, I, a real playmaking wide receiver will cost you more than 12 No, I think you can get him for 12 I, I do. I, I do. A I think it will not cost you 12 uh, Nobody, nobody made Nobody made 14 last year in the wide receiver market. And mm-hmm. I think the market is going to come back this year, too. No, nobody made nobody made more than 14 Uh, The kid who signed in New England made 14 the wide receiver market was completely deflated last oh, year. Oh, you talk about okay, you talk about the guys that signed last year, not overall, not in the league. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I see what you're I see and, what you're and based on I'm gonna look you. it up right now. Uh I don't I don't think the market is gonna be absolutely that on fire. At, at, you know, uh Devontae Adams, he ain't going nowhere. He's getting franchise tax. So well, well, well it depends. No, he's getting the Rogers no. Tag. No, nope, he's getting franchise tag. Don't even, don't even think. Oh, about okay, it. I see what you're saying. They'll keep him for the year. Okay, I got you. I yeah, got don't you. even think about it. Then you've got uh, Allen Robinson, who's had a dismal year. No, uh, Chris good. Goodwin's on IR. Juju Smith Schuster's on IR. There's nobody. There's nobody in free agency. Like, there's nobody in free agency. James well, Crowder. Really that you're going to give big money to anyways. What'd you say? There's not a lot of big money. No, nah, there, there's yeah. there's eight nine million dollar receivers in free agency this upcoming season. So nobody's nobody's getting fourteen million dollars. No, nah, eh, no. Nah. So you know, it's it's it, uh, Odell Beckham is 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 there, but is he really a good fit for this team? Would he even sign here? I doubt it. Um, there's talk Jarvis Landry might be on the free agent market, and you know Jarvis ain't coming back here. Jarvis to give this when he left, he gave the he gave the franchise this. Uh, no, so I, wouldn't, he, I wouldn't want Jar, I wouldn't want Jarvis Landry here, bro. You need a more oh, explosive Jarvis player Landry, here. Jarvis need, Landry would work here because it would no, allow Wall. Uh, J, it would allow Jalen Wall to go work. outside. I know. I yeah. get it. Jarvis I get would work it, here. But, but I, I'd want another. I, I'd want somebody faster. I need another mm-hmm. speed guy. You need a guy. Field. You need a guy to get open. I, I don't. I hear what you're saying, you and another, I do agree with you. Guy. But I think I think the easiest way to improve this unit is to get a legitimate slot receiver and move I'd, Waddle. I draft him, by the way. I would huh? draft. Him. I would draft another speed guy. Yeah, and and and, and, would... and and then you and then you got to go through the you know you got to go through the growing pains of of you know not every every rookie is is Jalen Waddle and and fortunately he's had a productive rookie season. But let me ask you this question here, and this is this is a good question. Jalen Waddle's been a very productive player, but if you would have stayed at three, you would have had the opportunity to get Chase, who's he would have far more. Than that. Anyways. They would huh? have taken Waddle. They would have taken Waddle anyways. That was their guy. I'm a Chase guy, dude. Uh, Chase was my guy I, in the I, draft, but it seems like they were in love with Waddle anyway. So if, I, if I you agree take with Waddle you. at three. But it was I, it I wasn't the right call. It, it, I agree with you, but then there's a problem that. with your decision making. We don't know that. It's just because he's in a different offense. He's featured differently. I'm sorry, oh, dude. I, I'm not. I'm not blaming. See, no, Chase is you an just, all you pro. Just spoke, Chase is you just an talked all about pro. that. It's not. You just talked about all the things that are wrong with Tua around Tua. And now you're going back to just blaming it all on Tua. No, 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 no. I'm not blaming it all on Tua. What I'm you saying are. is. 
What I'm saying, no, I didn't. I didn't mention to his name when I brought up. You, you don't Waddle. have to indirectly. You're taking a shot at Tua because you're saying Waddle is the wrong pick because he's no, not no, as no, explosive no. I'm not saying as Chase. Is the wrong but he pick. can be as who, explosive as Chase if he's in an explosive offense. Who is the better player? I don't know yet, I, dude. I'm a Chase guy. I would have picked Chase over Waddle. Okay, so I, but, you know. One guy's I, having a I have a little bit of a season. bias, and I'm going to say Chase. But I, but the reason I can't really lean that way is because Waddle's stuck in a, you know, crap offense. Yeah, and, and, and Chase would have I'd like to at least see him in the same kind of environment so I can judge them evenly. That's all I'm saying. That That's fair, but it, it's it's not a, a good excuse. Guy. I'm okay. a Chase guy. Then if you're a okay. Chase guy. Answer I the want to chase. At Answer three. the question. Would you rather Everybody have Waddle in the draft chase. or Chase? Dude, I wanted Chase or Pitts. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I, okay? So, it's not like I, I'm the one that selected Waddle, but at least I'm going to be objective and say the kid's in a shit offense. So, if I if I put him in a good offense, maybe he's just as good as, as Chase or maybe even better. I don't know. Don't know. I mean, Chase is about to set a, a, a rookie record, and that one's a, a good one. That one's, you know, uh, receptions is cute, but Waddle's one of the smallest receptions guys in the NFL. Uh, Chase is big, big play Recep production. Receptions is cute when you're the only guy on the team, and they know you're going to, they're going to you, and they, you still can't stop it. Hey, and, man. and how many first downs? That's just not cute. That's clutch, bro. Okay, and, I, and, and and he caught everything, which we were worried a little bit because he was uh, fumbling a little bit too much in the preseason and training camp. And even the first first or second week of the regular season, I think he had a drop or two or whatever. And so then he fixed that also, and he took off. I, you're you're uh, you're underestimating Waddle, bro. And what do you? I know? I like Waddle, but Waddle Chase has shown you as an All Pro year yeah. one. Yeah. Out the gate, yeah, and yeah. yeah, he's got chemistry with, 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 you know, Burrow, um, in a better offense, but he's an all pro. We can't, not, we can't, we, I'm not denying that at all. Wow, is a nice player having it's a very a, solid it's a layup. Season. It's a layup to pick Chase now because he's in a more explosive. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a not, nice not even just Chase, but Pitts, Pitts too. Pitts could have helped him. Yeah. He's had a very good season. Yeah, I, although, you know, I, I don't know. These idiots might put him on the sidelines, too, at times. I don't know. I have no idea. You know what I mean? They, they don't play Matt Collins. They don't play They don't play Gesicki. Uh, Duke Johnson has seven rushes for 49 yards, and they're like, man, yeah, what, what do we need another 49 yards? Damn. I give him 14 yards, times. Bro. You might get 100. Why Kyle, we don't need that? What, I mean, come Kyle on, Pitts has a thousand yards, one touchdown, but a thousand yards. Who's that? Right. Kyle Pitts didn't know that. Thousand that yards, okay, one okay. touchdown. Again, the offense is you know, and Ridley's probably more the centerpiece there and all that stuff. So I get that. I, I'm, I wouldn't worry about that either. With 105 Pitts, but, targets, I'm curious, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious who's the most targeted playmaker in their offense i'll tell you in a second oh it has to be calvin ridley then right no if it's not Pitts, it has to be ridley then Pitts is the most targeted guy in their offense okay right it has to be either Pitts or ridley yeah so those are the two best weapons they have and Pitts is obviously the safer throw so you're going to make more throws to that and matt ryan is smart enough for that calvin yeah, ridley so he must be injured he's only played five games this season oh know? that yeah well yeah okay yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah, he's he's got fifty two targets, thirty one receptions in five games. But um, so that that tells you if you extrapolated, he would have had he, more yeah, targets. He, yeah, he would have been one hundred fifty instead. But right, I, what do you? Tight end with one touchdown. That's, that's I don't blame him either. That's just one he of those is, things. He, that you know, you know, he'll be and, fine, and, bro. He's gonna be a monster. Let let me oh. let me add this to to the Gesicki pile. Two touchdowns this season. I think he might be at like four touchdowns in his career. Not his fault. Why? Why isn't he more of a red zone weapon? Not his fault. 
I can't I I, I can't answer stupid coaching. You know what I mean? Uh, that, I'm not I'm not addressing I mean I've addressed stupid coaching all year long and I'm just, you know, it, this is just part of the moronic state of uh, the coaching uh, staff of the Miami Dolphins. It's a terrible coaching staff. Today. Yeah, I, I asked Flo terrible. about about the offense and and how bad it's been this season today and his answer which I found not not new or revelatory was it's on me. And I'm, I, and, and while he's giving his answer, he took total full ownership for it. And while he's giving his answer, all I thought to myself is, you're right. It is all on you because your right. offensive hires have been piss poor. Right. From right. from day one. You you got no Rolodex. Say, he's got the Joe Philbin problem, bro. You can't, hire, <laughs> you, you can't hire coaches that are stuck in one place their entire career. The best that's coaches a, are the ones that have been take. fired. Uh, tell me, tell me, ones, explain, explain yourself a little bit on that one because I've never the heard be, that. The best ones, I explained this to you already a couple months ago, but you have terrible memory. The best ones are, are the coaches that have been hired. You, you sound like my wife. Well, yeah, well maybe she's, she's a good woman. See, she's smart. But anyway, she's probably experienced the same thing because I, I've already, now that I'm on with you all the time, I have realized <laughs> your memory sucks. Okay? Uh, you sound like my wife. Goodness uh, gracious. No, no. Our listeners have also realized your memory sucks. Okay. But anyway, so the, the coaches that are hired and fired, they're yeah. all they're in different offenses and different defenses and special teams. They meet different coaches. They meet different head coaches. They get to know all kinds of different systems, even ones that they're even different offenses that they're playing against. If they're a defensive coordinator and all that. And in the process, they build up a Rolodex. You know, you want an Eric B enemy because he's actually been a position coach in several teams and coordinating in different, in, you know, coordinating offenses in different teams. You want coaches that have bounced around. The guys like Philbin and Flo, they're stuck in one place. Then you hire them, and those places don't allow you to take any of their coaches practically. Right? Flo took two of them, and he fired them right away. Philbin couldn't get one of them. And since they didn't bounce around, they know no one around the league. And so it becomes a problem. And you know where I, la I laugh the most at this, Omar? When I have a listener or a texter or whatever and tell me they hired that guy again, and I tell them, when you see somebody get hired again four, five, seven, eight times as a linebacker's coach, defensive coordinator, this, that, it's because he's good. It's not because he's bad. He got fired because the whole situation was bad, and he lost his job in the process with it. Doesn't mean that he's the person that's wrong with the situation, so he gets to bounce around. And that's what you want. You want the experienced coaches because they've been all over the place and they know all kinds of people. The guys that are stuck in the same systems, notice they really struggle to become head coaches because they don't have the, the Rolodex because they don't know anybody around the league yeah. at all. They didn't work with them. They don't. They didn't hang out with them. I, 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 no, with them. I, I, I see. I mean, you go to these places too, but in the senior bowl, like Flo has – relationships and connections with all kinds of coaches from different staffs and and guys recommend guys and guys put in good words you know how the league works but it's not uh, the same as working the same. with them no 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 it's getting getting an, getting an offensive coordinator and, and this is going to be his best shot what coaches are being fired this year and who runs a good offense from that staff that could be looking for an opportunity like I, I don't know what coaches are being fired except for Jacksonville. How many coaches may fire Jacksonville? And is there another coaching staff that's been fired yet? No, right? No, not yet. So, so Bl Bloody Monday features probably features Chicago uh, Raiders. The Ra there's been another co Raiders coach. Oh yeah, staff. that's right. Raiders did. Yeah, they do have to make so, a change. So, so we 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 got Chicago Raiders. And Jacksonville. I don't want Jacksonville's offensive coordinator. Maybe no. Matt Nagy. Maybe his offensive coordinator. But their offense has been trash for two years. Yeah, and Raiders is Gruden anyway. Yeah, I mean, so it 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 will it, be it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, he can he oh oh um the Brady kid from um from Joe Brady. Joe, huh? Brady. Joe, Joe Brady Joe Brady who who, who calls South Florida home? 
A um, lot of lot of speculation that Cristobal was going to hire him. Didn't didn't he, he does he doesn't like recruiting, supposedly. Yeah, so, I mean, if the NFL oh. is his game, I I don't yeah. understand why uh why uh Ken Dorsey wouldn't get some consideration, especially since he has history with um 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 the offensive corner of Debo, Brian but Debo. See, here's what I was explaining that Flo can't even get to. The, the stage of just being able to build a good staff. Think about this. You're Andy Reid. So Nagy, Biennemi, Frank Reich, Peterson. You're Bill Walsh. It's Dennis Green. It's yeah. Sam Weish. It's Holmgren. It's it's uh, Mariucci. You understand? It, it's, it, you know, Vrabel just... He had Arthur Smith as his offensive coordinator. Now he's the head coach of Atlanta. And so now he's got to replace it. And here he is with, with double digit wins again. You know what I mean? So it's not just one time that you're going to do this. You're going to have to do this over and over and over again. And if you're Belich even if you're Belichick, you still have Charlie Weiss and Bill O'Brien and McDaniel's, and on the defensive side, it's Cromel. And but that, and, that comes with that comes with continuity. That comes with. I mean, when you've got a Brian Flores who's been on your staff for 15 years, and other coaches like Joe Judge who've been on your staff for double digit in years, it's easier. It's easier. Let's not deny that. But that my 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 brother, that's part of it. You have to know them, and you have to know the future, and to be able to develop them. That's the point that I'm trying to get at. Not only do you name your offensive coordinator, you already are developing another one in the wings because he's your receivers coach or your QB coach, and he's helping design the offense, all of those kind of things. Yeah. That's what a great head coach is all about, that you're helping me in my point and all of that. That's kind of the trick, and this guy can't even get step one done. So – Think about this. That's why I keep telling everybody, you got the wrong guy in place. If he can't do step one, how's he going to do step two? He did step one on defense. He's just not very good at doing defense. it in offense. He is defense. Yeah. Come on. Come on. He is defense. That's why Damn. it works. Sort of. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> he still makes Jalen Phillips drop back in coverage. You know, he, he, Not he, lately. He, not anymore. Oh, he figured it out. Yeah, uh, you know. He, I mean, still you're, 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 the, but the hope is that he, he he could develop into that player. He just didn't. And so, and what you, so what you do is you start him off with what he knows, and then you slowly add. They but did. He, he, they he did went to the first side, and Baker was never a middle guy, and he put him in the middle, and then he figured out no, he's an outside guy. You know, so you know, nah, so. I'm still on the fence about that one. You, well, you you're on the fence that he's more of an outside than a middle. No, you can't be. You you, I, you know he's not a middle linebacker. He's He'll not an outside middle. linebacker either. He's a he's weak side middle. linebacker. He doesn't have the the body to play middle in this in this defense. I, I don't disagree with you, but okay. he's also a weak side linebacker in a three four scheme. No, I, I get it, but if he's going to survive anywhere, it's outside, not inside. Is my point. That's all. That's yeah, all I mean, he could be he could be one of the two inside guys in in a in a three four scheme. Uh, he's I mean, it is what it is. They figured out how to, how to make it work. So, one more thing before mm -hmm. I let you go, I am terrified of this game because of this. Sometimes a basketball team falls behind by twenty points in the second quarter, and a second half starts, and they come out on fire, and they work their way back down by seventeen, down by twelve, down by six, down by three. They tie the game. There's two or three minutes left. They run out of gas. And then uh -huh. they lose the game at the end. We've seen teams that, you know, they start off slow in, this, in the beginning of the season, one and seven. And then they go out and uh, win a bunch of games, and then they kind of run out of gas because there's nothing to play for now. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm kind of afraid of, that this team busted their asses to put themselves in this position. And I almost get the feeling that some of these guys are going to get to this game. And in the first bit of adversity, they're going to go, oh, man. I'm done, bro. This is uh, this isn't it, and and emotionally they're kind of be checked out a little bit. I'm a little afraid of that happening in this game. Um, here's the thing. Uh, I don't think 
that a Brian Flores team will ever be checked out. And if they are checked out, you know, uh, I'll be stunned. Stunned. Now, I think people might misinterpret checked out for just being dominated and out-executed by a better right. team. Right. Trying to get themselves playoff ready. But keep in mind now, and, and I just wrote this in the Sun Sentinel. You realize it's been 20 years since the Dolphins have swept the Patriots. 20 years, two decades. Yeah, I know. I was there when they did it. So yeah. the odds and chances that Miami would do it against a playoff-bound Patriots team, what, what, what we usually see with, from the Patriots at this point in the season is they're going to be working on their game plan for their first-round opponent or working on things that they do not do well to try to improve or get looks to try to prepare them. They don't care about this game. They care about getting themselves prepared for the playoffs. And that's what this game is for them. Now, can Miami, Miami has caught them slipping doing that at the end of the season. But the games are usually at home. It is at home here. So, you know, it, it, could, it, it could go a any way. But the bottom line to me that's the scary part is, and, and this is how I used to make my predictions, and I will continue to go ahead and make my predictions this way. If that team is more physical than Miami and can run the ball effectively and wins at the line of scrimmage on a consistent basis and are more physical than the Dolphins, they're probably going to win, and that's the Patriots. Now, Patriots were more physical in week one. They didn't win. Xavier put on his cape and did, did his thing. Um, and I think the only equalizer would be Tua. Right. Uh, you know, coming, how much is he trying to respond to his poor performance? And we shall see because Bill Belichick, you know, he's going to have something for Tua. Oh, he yeah. Gonna, yeah, for he, sure. He's going to take away Wally. Yes. Yeah. Well, they just did it this week. Yeah. So his, uh, Bill's former player. Okay. Oh, by the way, folks, Vrabel is not from the Belichick tree. Correct. Trees are when they coach oh. under the coach. Okay, idiots. Because I see media members across the country, television, writers, radio, whatever, morons. He's not from the Belichick tree. He, he played for Belichick. He is okay? technically a fruit born from the Belichick tree because he coached under great under Romeo Cornell. Yeah, but he's not really a Belichick tree guy. Okay. He just played for Belichick. Yeah. He yeah. supposedly gives credit to urban Meyer and somebody else for his coaching biggest coaching influences, which is so, interesting. So what you're saying is he's loose with his fingers. All right. All right. We got that. All right. Uh, anyway. Uh, so you, uh, you, you think they're going to win uh, this week? No, right? What do you think? No? Yeah. So you're you're having a little bit of the feelings I have uh, about this game that it – okay. I mean, but if they do win, I'll be pleasantly yeah. surprised. Oh, I'll be super happy. You know, it'll suck that they're not in the playoffs, but – Anytime you can beat Belichick, it's it's a beautiful thing. I'm 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 good with that. I would love. Getting, listen, this season open. getting to nine wins was always what I felt like was the max of what this team could achieve. Be honest with you, that was my preseason prediction. Well, and I would love this ninth win, even if it doesn't mean anything in the big picture. But beating Belichick would be a sweet thing. That's for sure. Follow him on Twitter at Omar Kelly. Catch his work at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Follow them there and uh, subscribe to the Sun Sentinel, folks. All right, support support all of our local journalists. Omar, as always, appreciate you, my brother. We'll all talk right. on uh, Sunday. Be good. Talk to you there. You got it. There you go, Omar Kelly, and our EJD Construction dot com Miami Dolphins report. You've been listening to the EJD Construction dot com Miami Dolphins report with Omar Kelly. For additions, home remodeling, or custom work, call Eric at 305-433-4843. EJDConstruction.com is the custom home builder and general contractor you can trust. 305-433-4843. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, from talking from the loser department, um, Clint Portis. What a loser, bro. Kids, do me a favor. You know, if you want to be a star, great. 
You want to be an actor, fantastic. Want to be a singer, a rapper, any kind of entertainer, awesome. Learn another skill or learn your business. If you're going to be a football player, then learn about the business. Become a broadcaster. Become an agent. Become a contract negotiator. Learn coaching. Do something else. You know, Pat Sertan's life didn't end after he played football, and neither did Jason Taylor. And, you know, they they had another skill set, and they learned something else. You know, well, what learn how to make a living and not be a scumbag criminal. Okay, because that's what Clint Portis now is, a jailbird. So Clint Portis was sentenced Thursday to six months in federal prison and six months of home detention after pleading guilty in September to conspiring to commit health care fraud, part of a scheme involving more than a dozen ex-NFL players. He signed a plea agreement just a few days ago after a jury could not agree on a verdict after his criminal trial in the U.S. District Court in Kentucky. As part of the agreement, Portis admitted in participating in a nationwide scheme in which ex-NFL players filed fraudulent reimbursement claims with Gene Upshaw NFL Player Health Reimbursement Account Plan, which allows former players to seek funds for out-of-pocket medical care that is not covered by insurance. Portis played nine seasons for the NFL and is due in prison in March, and according to court records, uh, he allowed Robert McEwen, a former NFL linebacker, to submit reimbursement claims on his behalf for an oxygen chamber and uh, cry cryosana. Portis received 99000 from the NFL plan but never purchased the equipment. Portis knew the claims McEwen submitted on his behalf were false and fraudulent and was aware of the high profitability of the claims McEwen submitted on his behalf and were false and fraudulent and deliberately ignored that fact. And and think about this. It's only a certain budget for that kind of stuff. So by you taking that, you might have taken it away from somebody that actually needed it. You know, I have no sympathy for Clinton Portis, okay? I don't give a crap that he's a former Kane or any of that. You know, you're just, you're stealing and not only are you stealing, you're stealing from a fund that is there to actually help people who need it. No sympathy. Learn another skill. Okay? I get it, dude. I've been in this business a long time. I've worked with a bunch of ex-jocks. And I've seen a couple of them that I've had to work with that I see that there's no future for them. It's either football or would you like fries with that? But you know what? Working at McDonald's is a lot better than stealing. And stealing from people that actually need it. So no sympathy, dude, for Clinton Portis. What a freaking loser, bro. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Um, uh, just invest, invest in cryptocurrency and listen to the big O you'll live better. Yeah, there you go. I like that. I like that dip and all that's in the market. We're, we're way up on the portfolio. So it don't matter to me as long as you, as long as you invest and you, you are patient, you'll be fine. It won't be a bad thing. All right, we got to wrap it up here on the show. We uh, thank all of you out there, as always, for uh, tuning in on the show and supporting us and smashing the like button and all that good stuff. I appreciate it. We um, will see you on Sunday. Remember, 225, we're going to be there at uh, Sports Grill on Bird Road. Final Dolphin broadcast uh, this Sunday. So come on out and join us, man. Have some fun. Uh, uh, we got to thank. Ira Winderman, Manny Navarro, Omar Kelly, and of course, Sean Stanley. See you all. Uh, see you all on Sunday. Different time, same place, same bat channel. Have a good one. This is the Big O Show. Sports fans love a place with great food, cold drinks, and TVs everywhere. That's why sports fans love Sports Grill and their seven amazing locations. Check out the Bird Road location at 11481 Southwest 40th Street in the back corner of the West Bird Shopping Center. Sports Grill is also now offering some great employment opportunities.
All kinds of positions are now available from kitchen to hosting. Call for more information at 305-485-8845. From wraps to salads to amazingly delicious specialty dishes, Sports Grill is the home to the legendary special Grilled Wings. Since 1987, Sports Grill, good food, good drink, and good friends. It's the Big O 